Chippewa Hockey is on CCHN. Oh my goodness! The place to watch men's Division Three. Here's Connor Morgan out in front for Porzan to score. And women's Division Two. Burnett's gonna get a shot and go as she scores. Every shift, every goal, every game. Central Michigan has turned the corner. All in one place. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. The 2023-24 season is finally upon us, and the Chippewas are ready to start their quest for a fifth straight national tournament appearance. Brennan Martin, in his first full season as the Chippewas head coach, has spent the offseason recruiting players and building up the off or building up the roster, pardon, to its to the fullest it's been in quite some time. The revamp squad faces a tough road to St. Louis in a couple of months' time. A road that features six teams that made the national tournament a year ago, including the reigning national champions. And that route to St. Louis has to start somewhere, and that some places here and in the corner of US 131 and M20, Big Rapids, Michigan. Good evening, everybody, and welcome inside the broadcast booth at Avic Lave and Ice Arena. Inside the booth, my name is Ray Claves alongside Devin Sarah, and we're happy to have you along for uh, yet another season of Chippewa hockey here on the CMU Club Hockey Network. Devin, I don't know about you, but I'm pumped. I'm super pumped, Reagan. We're back for their 11th season. We ended with some fireworks in the year. Nationals, we made a little trip out there, but this is where we've wanted to be all along, getting back to this season. Starts right here in Avoglave, and I'm excited as you are. I, I'm with you there, Devin, and frankly, as much work as we've done over the off season, Brendan Martin has been working much harder at the helm of this Central Michigan team for his first season. He has signed 17 new players to this roster coming into this 11th season of play. Ten of them he took from Division II team here at CMU, and that's more than half the roster, Devin. I know last year something that this team struggled with was uh, trying to find an identity, and that took them a while to get into that. How do you think this team is able to find their identity this year? Well, first of all, it started with well, the work they already did in this offseason. You mentioned the 17 new players. They had a training camp just about two weeks ago to get ready for this season. They wanted to see who on this squad, one, had their legs under them, was ready to go, and two, who was going to compete for that roster spot. Nearly every single player, every single coach I've talked to, came into this locker room with a driven attitude to be better. We remember last year the Nationals' appearance didn't go well for CMU. They did not win a single game in that Nationals tournament. So for them, there's a motivation to be better. This Division II guys, well, let's be frank, they played on a team that didn't win a lot of games. They didn't get the chance to go to a Nationals tournament or even play in their conference. So for them, there is a heart and a drive to be successful on this new squad. What's going to feature scratches up and down through the year, you're going to see this roster change on a nightly basis. But as it starts right now for identity, well, Brennan Martin wants to have an aggressive tone. I had a chance to talk to him before this game started, and the biggest thing that he wants to see out of these guys tonight is playing aggressive, playing to their style of hockey, which is to wear a team down. Use the depth that they just newly acquired build on that period by period and take it by that and no more and play a full 60 minutes tonight and it starts here against Ferris State. Yeah, and uh, this team is coming off of a year, Devin, that was really a roller coaster of a year. They started a uh, club best 5-0 and oh, uh, that started with a win here at Avaglave and almost a year ago to the date, October 23rd was a 4-1 win. They ended up then sweeping series against Lake Superior State and Cleary before Things kind of went up and down from there. Uh, Porzondic, though, uh, Andrew Porzondic really led the way for the Chippewas in scoring throughout the year. Big season for him, 40 points on the year. We mentioned when there was a lot of injuries on this team. Isaac Gibbs spent time out after that Saginaw series. Keelan Baker, Jay Nadu, he had to step up into that role and be that goal scorer on a night-to-night -night basis. He did that, but when your point made about last year, in Ferris State specifically, Connor Morgan in his debut was phenomenal. A goal and an assist in that, and won a lot of the dirty, gritty plays, winning corner battles. Isaac Gibbs also had a goal and two assists. He's looking to have a better season than he did a year ago. So you're expecting guys like that to come in against a team that they have had success with and do it once again, obviously, but first and foremost, use their assets and get used to playing with some new guys that they haven't before. Yeah, indeed. Uh, last year, Central Michigan ended up uh, with with a little bit of a tough record, only getting 14 wins on the year, a couple of losses in there as well. But 
They ended up going 4-5-0-2 oh, in the second semester. And really, they really just sque uh, squeaked into Nationals uh, where they ended up going 0-3. Oh, but for, for this team, in their fifth, uh, going for their fifth consecutive national tournament appearance. Well, you'd have to give thanks to the Creighton squad that couldn't make it, or more or less sorry to them, because CMU squeaked in as that 17th team right on the bubble. But yeah, to your point, cut it right. In a, a new atmosphere, a new environment, it's like apples and oranges. It's a brand new season. The MCHC has changed. Teams like Lawrence Tech have gotten better. Grand Valley State added some depth and some cool new jerseys, by the way, they revealed the other day. Uh, in this case, it's more about how do you compete in the MCHC and you start right there. This past year, 10 of the last 11 national champions have been from the MCHC. So if you can run the gauntlet in this conference specifically, it translates to success in which all four teams that made the Final Four were from this conference. And the winner of the national championship game was the Michigan Wolverines, who ended up winning the MCHC East last year with a record of 10-0-0 and 2. They did not lose a game. One of those ties came to Central Michigan, but really this season, Devin, there's a lot of challenges coming up, especially to start the year. CMU plays Notre Dame uh, next weekend, Lawrence Tech and Saginaw Valley State all within the first month. Well, you have to because the ranking period, as much as it matters, the middle part and the end of the year, it's really the early games that get you that liability to be ranked higher and the computer can help you. As much as you don't want to admit it, they kind of played some teams that weren't up there in the ranking to start the year. And you saw it when they had big loss against Florida Gulf Coast and this Adrian Bulldog, or Adrian Bulldog, Ferris State Bulldog team mixing up my dogs, right? The point is they're playing a gauntlet out of the gate in order to prepare their national schedule, number one. And number two, Play some good teams. You gotta beat the best to be the best. And it's for, you just talked about identity. This Central Michigan team will find out real quick what their identity is against these tough opponents. And we'll step aside for just a little bit here. When we come back, we'll take a look at the two teams on the ice in just a little bit more depth. You're watching CMUD3 Club on, the C on CCHN. We're back here inside Ava Glavin Ice Arena, Reagan Cleaves, alongside Devin Sarah for the CCHN pregame show ahead of the opening night matchup between the Central Michigan Chippewas and the Ferris State Bulldogs. Taking a look at the opponent tonight, Ferris State. Last year they went 11, 18, 2, and 0. Oh, but despite that sub 500 record, they ended up uh, cracking the top 25 at that number 25 spot. That was because of the big wins they had against Grand Valley State. They had a big upset win in the month of February against them. Also, CMU, they played right in that November month and had that upset. So on paper, even though they didn't have the best record, they were still a very competitive team, especially with guys like Hunter Bartholomew in net, who is notably not in this lineup anymore. We'll get to that and much more as we continue on with the pregame show. Um, as you talked about, right, that kind of uh, dynamic is going to be interesting to see what this Ferris State team looks like. Yeah, this Ferris State team, much like Central Michigan last year, we really had, had ups and downs throughout their year. They would beat Grand Valley State one night and then turn around and drop a massive game to Oakland, a team that 
that didn't make the top 20, or that didn't make, pardon me, the national tournament last season. Uh, they are under uh, first year head coach Nolan Smith, who was hired earlier this year in, in uh, to replace Dan Cosgrove, the head coach for the last nine seasons for the Club Dogs. And this this team, if, uh, drifting a little bit into the series history, Devin, last year, last two time, last time these two teams played each other, Central Michigan started really well, getting out to a three nothing start and then it was all downhill from there. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and mostly their junior class is the one that showed up. Guys like Alec Newton, who returned to this lineup, were really, really good in that series. I'm also looking at names like Trevor Van Vliet, right, who notably missed time in the first semester against CMU. And so for, for them, it's about what they did the last time out, right, and never being really out of a game. And for Central, it was not blowing those leads. And fortunately, they let one happen there. It kind of snowballed them throughout the rest of the year. but. New year, new faces, new team. And so I think tonight's going to have a very, very different dynamic than that last one you mentioned. Yeah, especially with the absence of Jordan Schmidt, who had the uh, hat trick in that game against Central Michigan, fueling that comeback almost single-handedly. Got the last three goals in that game for Ferris State that brought them their third win in club history against these Chippewas. CMU was 5-3 and three all time against Ferris State. We'll, we'll step aside once more. When we come back, we'll take a look at the impact players and the keys to the game here on CCHN. Back here in Big Rapids, Michigan, happy to have you along. Reagan Cleves, Devin Sarah here in the pregame show ahead of opening night here on CCHN. Taking a look at the impact players tonight, Devin, for Central Michigan, Connor Morgan and Sam Zavelson are really going to be guys to watch. Connor Morgan, who in last year's matchup scored his first career goal, and Sam Zavelson making his first appearance in net for CMU. Yeah, starting with Connor Morgan, he had a terrific debut. I mentioned that earlier in the show. And one thing that stands out with a guy like Connor Morgan, even though he's shorter in stature, 5'7", 170 pounds, he's a gritty player. He's a grinder. He gets in the dirty areas in the corners, and he tries to win battles. And he does that with great stick handling ability, a great keen hockey IQ, right, and being have a good sense of the play. And he can shoot it pretty well, too. So for Connor Morgan, I'm expecting more of the same from him tonight to be that gritty player on a fourth line where he's playing with uh, Veselovich and then uh, Chris Armentrout, who he hasn't played with before on the line. And that's going to be a very, very marquee lineup. We'll talk about that in more. And then you mentioned Sam Zavelson, the starter predominantly for Division II last year. Very, very good goaltender on his right. From New York, had a lot of experience in New York playing in juniors. For Zavelson tonight, he's just going to have to be reliable. You don't need him to be spectacular, but you need him to show that he can be a reliable netminder. And he's got to have good defense in front of him, of course. So for Zavelson, it's just being reliable. He's a quick goaltender, and you can talk about that more later. He's quick, able to get off his edges left to right very quick, very easily. 
And so we're going to have to see what he can do in that regard tonight. And on the other side of the ice for Ferris State, Alec Newton, Trevor Van Vliet, two of the top three scorers on the squad, minus Jordan Schmidt from a year ago. Alec Newton had 15 goals and 23 assists in just 27 games, and Trevor Van Vliet was a monster when he could get on the ice, Devin. Yeah, and he wasn't on the ice for the first part of the year, but then he stepped into a role where he played teams like Saginaw, Grand Valley State, and the best of the best of the MCHC, and was shining bright. Only one game you mentioned he did not have a point in, and multiple, multiple of those games had two or more goals in it from him. So you gotta expect Van Vliet to be a power player in this regard for his team, along with a stacked junior class. He's gonna be on the power play, he's gonna be manning the play, and he's gonna be trying to get open for those one-timers. And as for our other impact player, well, Alec Newton had two assists, right, in that comeback win over there. So you have to expect Newton, as I mentioned, a strong junior class to lead the way for these Bulldogs. They're gonna have to get points on the board early, and they're gonna have to take Simi out of it if they wanna keep up. Yeah, and for Central Michigan, Devin, what do you think they need to do to win tonight? Our keys to the game, as you mentioned, it, I, look, against a team that's trying to find their identity, you have to start off and be aggressive from the get-go. Brennan Martin talked about getting guys earning opportunities to be on this roster. Nothing is given anymore. You're not going to be given a roster spot night in, night out. If you don't play well one night, you might not see the action the next. So you have to be aggressive from the get-go. You have to understand your assignment and go 110% into that, whether that's being a goal scorer or carrying the puck up through the middle of the ice. It does not matter. Everybody has to contribute on all fronts. But the second thing is, if you have any rust, you better knock it off now. The training camp went very well. Everybody had their legs under them by the end of it. But you might still have rust. You might see some missed passes the first 15 minutes. Not to be alarmed, Chippewa fans. It happens. It's the ACHA. So you have to expect yourself to have a little bit of rust, get things under you, get calmed down in those first 20 minutes. Finally, prove to your goal trainer that he can trust to you. This Central Michigan defense was banged up at the blue line last year. Keelan Baker missed a lot of time. Kyle Chapman didn't play the whole first semester. They have depth at the defensive position and a whole bunch of new lines. I'm expecting guys like Christopher Martin to have a big year this year in his leadership role. The Marty, Brendan Martin might be the head coach, but Christopher Martin is as much important to this team as he is. Uh, Sam Kamara is looking to have a big step up this year along with Brandon Clements and Braden Keel, two sophomores. So this defense has to get trust from Zavelson. He can be good, he can be reliable, but that defense has to come first, and that's gonna be the core of this team heading forward this season. And it'll be interesting to see how well Central Michigan knocks off the rust. As to Ferris State, I know we've done a little bit of knocking off the rust here. First 20 <laughs> minutes bit, yeah. of our broadcast here. But we're happy, happy that you've joined us for opening night on CCHN. We'll step aside. Zam is just about halfway through its trip around the ice. When it's done, we'll come back and have the starting lineups and puck drop here for you from Avic Laven Ice Arena. You're watching CMUD3 Club Hockey on CCHN.
Chippewa hockey is on CCHN. Oh my goodness! The place to watch men's division three. Here's Connor Morgan out in front for Porzon to scores! And women's division two. Burnett's gonna get a shot on goal and she scores! Every shift, every goal, every game. Central Michigan has turned the corner. All in one place. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey.
Starting goaltenders tonight, starting with the Ferris State Bulldogs. They turned to sophomore Lucas Danaran of Chesterfield, Michigan, Anchor Bay. Appeared in nine games last year for the Bulldogs. He gets the start in net for them. On the other side of things, for your Central Michigan Chippewas, they'll turn to Sam Zavelson from last year's Division II squad. He is from Merrick, New York, and his first ever start with the Division III team. Reagan. Thank you, Devin. Starting lineups tonight for Central Michigan. They turned to... Uh, they turned to Christopher Martin and Kyle Robertson on the D pairing. Brennan Schultz, Josh Gilgren, and Nathan Bottles, your starting forwards. And Zavelson in net to our left. Central Michigan will go from left to right across your radio dial. White, home, or white road uniforms, rather, this year. They did serve as the home ones for the majority of last season, but on opening night, they're wearing the whites with maroon trim along the arms. Gold and maroon striping, maroon pants, and white socks. The Bulldogs will counter right to left. Wearing their black home uniforms with red shoulders, gold and red trim, black pants, and black socks. It'll be Josh Gilgren to dig in with Brennan Karn. And Gilgren in his 50th collegiate game wins the faceoff and we're underway in the 2023-24 season. Brennan Martin, his pass for Brennan Schultz was intercepted. And it's going to be offside as the Bulldogs played it over the line. But it looked like it could possibly have been... Onside as the Chippewas brought the puck back into their own end, but linesman made the call, so we'll have a draw just outside the CMU end. Gilgren this time loses the draw to Brennan Karn, and the Bulldogs flip it in. Martin's pass was intercepted. Here's Gaffney on the half wall. Gaffney and Barry battle for it there for the Bulldogs. It's worked up top. Gaffney tried to kick it away. Couldn't work it away there from Martin. Back with the top, Barry left point, a shot that was blocked. And here come the Chippewas, a nice touch pass. Here's Brennan Schultz of the line into the circle, a shot safe, Dan Duran. And he'll gobble it up, just 39 seconds into the opening period. Well, first minute, about what we sort of tried to see from CMU. They tried the stretch pass out first time and it missed, and then a good block the other way by Josh Gilgren. Got him on the race, his Schultz and Nathan Bottles connected. That was a great pass from Bottles there, and Schultz with a good shot on Dan Duran to get him started. Second line out there for CMU, Owen Campbell lost that draw, and the Bulldogs will try to work it out. Isaac Gibbs at neutral ice will flip that back in, holding it back in his own end. Here's Colton Cundiff. We'll work it around behind the net, Jack Guillory. There to play it, got worked over by Isaac Gibbs. He fed it out in front, and Beamish, though, got tied up there with Colton Cundiff. Play now into the right wing corner. It almost came out in front of the net, but Dandran had to poke it back free. Now they feed it out in front off Campbell's intercept, and it bounced around before coming to the left circle and cleared up to the line. Braden Keel uh, almost couldn't, almost kept it in, but ended up squeaking just outside the line before he slapped it in for offside. Yeah, just barely so, but what you're going to see right now, you've already seen characteristics of an aggressive tone. Connor Beamish is there trying to chase after this puck before a Bulldog can get to it in the end. Normally you try and back up, try and hem them in that, but he wants that puck possession right then and there. It's an aggressive forecheck right now for CMU, and this is what they wanted. This is what this identity they're trying to establish is, and we'll see if they can keep it up here the first two minutes almost gone. Playback underway. Minute and 20 gone. Here in the opening period of the season. Buck intercepted and neutralized by Alec Newton. Penalty coming up as the Bulldogs will commit the first infraction of the season. It should be a tripping call and it'll be Newton to go to the box. So Central Michigan, who had a fairly effective power play a year ago, will have a chance just a minute and 33 into the season. One of their best players from last year, the junior out of Midland, Michigan. He's pretty much been the guy on their forecheck that's been carrying the puck and that time he's trying to get Beamish working over on a play that he just trips him up right in front of the penalty box clear as day first power play of the year coming up Central Michigan 25 percent on the power play last year Jay Nadu his pass across knocked up into the air and Dan Duran will grab it and hold on to it 10 seconds gone the man advantage yeah, and, and you notice they want to try and spread the puck out to as many guys on the ice as they can. They only have five, but you're going to see them try and go high to low all night long and try and work this way in. They want to wear down this Ferris team, not just get shots on net. Martin's shot went wide of goal. It caromed off the half boards, and it'll come back up top to the captain, Martin. Martin will feed it down to Nadu, top of the left circle, fed, fed it out in front. Beamish couldn't get a good handle on that, and that'll go up and out of play off the battle there. Along the half wall, 31 seconds gone in the first power play of the year for Central Michigan. Andrew Porzonic and Jay Nadu led the team in goals 
on the man advantage a year ago, both with four. Porzondek led the team with nine points on the power play. Draw to the right of Dan Duran is won by Central Michigan. Back up top, Robertson will hit a fire shot. That carried wide. Gibbs in the near circle is shot off the side of the net. It'll be controlled here by DiMarti, and he'll take it and flip it the length of the ice. What would normally be icing on a five on five situation, we saw it. That was Charlie McAvoy talk about that at the Boston Bruins over the offseason. How you see it at U USA hockey level, it's not. It's, the question is whether players should be able to ice the puck on the penalty kill. Right now in the ACHA and elsewhere, it's, well, it's completely legal. Owen Campbell in the left corner picks up the rebound, fed it up top. It kicked off of Robertson's skate, and will have to control it back at neutral ice. We'll play catch with Isaac Gibbs at the blue line. Junior from Novi will try and work it out. Here's Bottles over the line. Bottles down the right wing and into the corner. Pressured there by DeMarty. Bottles near side Gibbs. He's got time and space. A shot saving the rebound. Back door. They score. Nathan Bottles has a power play goal in Central Michigan. Opens up the scoring here in this season with Nathan Bottles. It's 1-0 CMU. Second power play group. Their first debut. And it's a solid four check. They cycle this puck around. Guys are carrying it left and right. Josh Gilgren does a great job keeping this play alive in the zone first time. Then at the point, it's Robertson. And all they have to do is funnel it down low. Get Dan Deneau working from right to left that time. The first shot came from Isaac Gibbs, but then Bottles finished the play. And a 1-0 tilt for CMU. First goal, it's a power play in the first three minutes. Big hit across the way. And a penalty coming up here on Luke Vasilovich. The assist going to Owen Campbell on that one. They seem to have flipped the hmm. assist around, so it's Vasilovich to the box, giving now Ferris State an opportunity on the man advantage. They had a fairly good power play last year, 24 goals in 32 games. They have the penalty up on the board and will set to go to the right of Zavelson. Off the tie up, the Bulldogs control, worked up top. And they'll work it back down the wall. Here's Gaffney. Gaffney dancing in the corner. Will work it free to Van Vliet. Van Vliet will pull off, hold it on to the corner down low to Gaffney. Gaffney and Van Vliet switch. And now there's Chippewa is able to clear it out. That's a good job by Schultz that time to work over his man and great support on the back end. You see them pressuring two guys from different, different angles. It forces that forward into a tough spot. You either go cross body and pass it across the ice or try and work your guy over one on one. Alec Newton going into the boards hard. Here's DeMarty up at the point. He'll work it free to Van Vliet on the near half boards. Van Vliet into the circle, finds a man across the way, a shot that was just wide of goal. Here's Connor Morgan, he's able to take it and lift it down the ice right onto the net of Dandoran. Look out, Ferris State trying to get things going here. Long stretch pass from the net minder. Couldn't be handled there by Van Vliet. The Bulldogs will have to regroup and neutralize 52 to go in the man advantage. Christopher Martin fed it on ahead just too far. The Bulldogs will work out on the right wing. Kielb taken down, and Robertson takes an extra cross check. Over the line, here's Van Vliet. Trevor Van Vliet tries to put on some moves, but he's pressured to the outside behind the net. Van Vliet will work it up top. Here's Karn. Karn a shot through traffic block. Karn gets it back, swats it on goal. Gloved down by Robertson, and the Chippewas are able to clear it out with 17 to go on the penalty. To Vasilovic. First man defense and then great support. Robertson, a great block in front. This decor, look at that takeaway by Robertson. Couldn't get out of the zone, but look at that again. That time Bishop coming into support. Jake Bishop able to work the puck free as the penalty expires. Chippewas are back to full strength. one nothing lead. Here from Avaglavin. Kunduf couldn't get it out of the line. It'll be worked over by Jake Bishop. Trying to feed it out in front. Look out, Nader's behind the defense. And his backhand bid went just wide. Of the left post. Now Braden Keel up at the point. His shot was slapped wide. Here come the Bulldogs. Out on the left wing. Cundiff 
Passed it on ahead to Gaffney. Gaffney over the line, worked from behind by Porzondek. He fed it on goal, and Zavelson turned that one away. Bishop able to work it out. Comes bouncing to the near side. Here's Clements. Brandon Clements swats it in. Chippewas will go for changes. Six minutes gone in the opening period. Central Michigan on top. What a debut for Bishop. I mean, I don't know how he thread that pass through three defenders to get it to Nadu in the slot. Incredible yeah. shot, too. Better save by Dan, though. Referee getting in the way a little bit. Can't help it. Dan Duran. As Cundiff goes to the boards across the way with Connor Beamish. Beamish Clements in there for CMU. Owen Campbell and Isaac gives the forwards out there with Beamish. Clements and Braden Keelb out there. They were together most of last year on the defensive core. And now a penalty coming up on the Bulldogs. So CMU back to the power play here for the second time. Yeah, it's going to be on Chase Adams right here. He's arguing with this official. Remember that after that skirmish, the puck kind of got free that first time, and he was being held on to. So pending this official's notice, I think it would be interference based on the way Beamish was trying to get back to the puck. But you see the physicality, Reagan. Clements and Beamish are just working over these guys. They're like standing like tire Titan posts on a building. I mean, you cannot move them unless you have three or four Bulldogs on them at once. And that is impressive to see from a physicality standpoint. That right there is training camp and offseason work and getting better in the weight room. Adams off for a trip. The near side over the line, Gilgren. Hole stepped in with a shot, ripped it high. Campbell kept it at the line. Nathan Bottles has the only goal tonight. Up top for Gibbs, high slot. Fan on the shot, he gets it back. Great job to keep it in through the pressure there from Ben Nowak. Around to the near side, Josh Gilgren. Spent two seasons with Purdue Northwest ACHA Division I squad. Up top, Robertson will it up and fire his shot. Gilgren deflected that into the corner. Scooping it up there is Campbell. Bottles there to pick up the loose change. Bouncing puck at the side of the net. Bottles holds it back a minute and 11 to go in the power play. Bottles across the way, up top right point for Robertson. He mishandled it, but he gets it back along the boards. Chippewas have a lot of time and space on this power play. Here's a shot save and the redirect. Loose out in front of the goal, and they still jam away at it, and eventually Nathan Bottles is able to gain possession for the Chippewas. Which I've settled that down, let them spread things back out on this forecheck. Here's Bottles, left circle, a shot that's deflected up and into the netting with 45, or 44 seconds to go in the power play, 12.07 to go in the opening frame. And very composed again, not trying to rush the play, trying to get the first shot on net. They're looking for the right read. And what they're trying to do most notably is get Dan Duran moving from right to left and get them on a backdoor chance. That's what you saw that time. Ferris did a good job clogging the front of the net, but I mean, CMU's just taking away the puck possession right now. Jay Nadu picks up the loose puck across the way. Worked the stick free there from Colin Ellis as he went in for the poke check. Bouncing puck to the near side, controlled but not out. Kept in by Kamara. Kamara, his shot through traffic, and he scores! Tipped in front by Andrew Porzondek, and the Chippewas have two goals, both of them on the power play. They're up 2 nothing. Two Bulldogs at the half will get this, try and get this puck out of the zone, and it's wonderful position by Kamara. He reads it the whole way, elects to see some open ice and take this shot, and Porzondek is coming from right to left. He's looking down the channel of his stick to tip this blade in front, and he does it perfectly over the right blocker of Dan Aran, 2-0 Central Michigan. That is an excellent play by a sophomore who got so much better in the offseason, Reagan. Sam Kamara, my hat off to you. Here are the Bulldogs fresh off of that power play goal. Scored by the Chippewas. Bulldogs trying to gain some momentum. A collision at neutral ice. And away comes Connor Morgan. Connor Morgan through neutral ice. Absorbs a check over the line. The near side. It's fed back down in front. Oh, my goodness. What a pass. Vasilovich had a point-blank opportunity on the far side, but he put it short side. Soraki is the extra skater filling in on this fourth line. Big hit, oh my goodness. Here's Braden Keel, bounce pass off the boards to himself, will end up slapping it in, where it'll be Cullen Ellis to pick it up. His pass through neutral ice taken by Newton, intercepted there by the Chippewas, Brennan Schultz. Gilgren tipped the pass ahead, he's into the right circle. Flip a shot on goal, goes wide. 
9-15, oh, big, big hit man. there by Schultz. He absolutely wow. lit up. Another one in Pearl, two minutes and now Pierleski, they might get And it's going to be offside nope, yeah. against the Bulldogs, but Pierleski right Woo. at the far side face-off circle of neutral ice, skating with his head down, and he was lit up by Brennan Schultz. Well, 10.40 to Woo. go, Reagan. This is almost a picture-perfect first 10 minutes. I mean, they are aggressive, they are physical, they are absolutely dominating the puck possession time right now in this Ferris team state. They just look faster. They just look like they've got the jump in them. Brendan Martin has to be impressed on that bench, and it's coming from all four lines. Adams had his shot blocked from the half wall. Coming in to scoop up that puck is Will Rapoon. Rapoon will pick it up, transfer from Division Two. We'll work it over the line. Bottles collects the loose chain. Schultz, his shot went just wide through the crease. Campbell kept it at the left point. He'll chase the loose puck down. Nathan Bottles finds it in his skates and slaps it behind the goal. Here's Rapoon. His pass out in front denied. Campbell collects. Up to the left point, Rapoon. His shot through traffic, saving the rebound as it was tipped in front there by Schultz. Now Schultz, bottom of the right circle, fed it back door, but great job there by DeMarty to tie up his man on the back door. Yeah, he just saved that goal from Isaac Gibbs. That would have been an easy tap in for him. Loose puck in the right half wall. Reagan Cleaves, Devin Sarah inside the broadcast booth with you here at Avic Levin Ice Arena. Opening night, 2023-24 season. Chippewas and Bulldogs kicking off a weekend set. Pass picked off and neutralized. Here's Snow over the line. Snow will put the back hand shot on goal. And Z Zavelson, who hasn't really been tested much through the first 10 minutes and 40 seconds of this contest, has to make a... Pretty crafty save on the near post. Puck tied up across the way, worked free. And here come the Chippewas, Beamish, and Gibbs in a two-on-one. Gibbs across the line, fed it back door, and Beamish was tied up there by the back-checking Guillory. Snow trying to work the puck free through neutral ice. Hank Young will pick up the loose change. His dumping attempt was denied by a stern Chippewa defense. And it'll be sent back. Great intercept there by Christopher Martin to cut off that Bulldog pass intended there for Luke Snow. Bulldogs have to regroup back in their own end. Robertson, he'll tee it up and fire a shot. That went just wide and on its own volition. It'll work its way back into the Chippewa end. Greg, and it's so impressive how fresh they are. I know it's the beginning of the game, but they get this, now it's the third line out here, Porzonic, Nadu, and Bishop, and they're fresh, ready to go, and they're already thinking the next play's going. They're just a step ahead. They're just faster, point blank. Over the line, Bishop will take it and back it down low. Lucas Dandoran coming dangerously out of his net. Good job to work that puck free. Alec Newton, one touched it there to Pirileski. Pirileski over the line, just on side, but great defense there by Martin as the puck goes up and into the netting, covering most of the end zone to our left. I mean, so far, some of these Division II guys have been flying on all cylinders. Brendan Schultz laid out that big hit earlier. Connor Beamish is having a wonderful period. He's due for one of these right now with the ma amazing passes he's made. And then Jake Bishop, how about him to step into this lineup and be so physical and work so hard in those corners. Oh, no. Oh, good to see you. I thought that could have been worse. Perleski took his man into the boards hard. Chip was wanting a penalty. They're not going to get one. Shot deflected in front. Salveson the save and the rebound to the near side. It's worked free by Gaff or by Newton. Newton gets it back in the circle. A shot save by Salveson and the rebound behind the net. Newton tried to feed that out in front for Perleski. It wouldn't go. Here's Christopher Martin. Got the feed from Braden Kiel. Touch pass through center intercepted, but Clements gets it back. Clements over the line. He'll get a fire a shot. Save Dan Duran the rebound. Across the way, a spin around shot from the half wall was denied. That came off the stick of Chris Armand Trout. Up left wing, here come the Bulldogs. Over the line is Van Vliet. Into the slot, a shot that was blocked. Penalty coming up on Central Michigan. Clements will touch up, and it's going to be a hooking call. So CMU will go back on the penalty kill here. 7.14 to go in the opening period. Yeah, and Clements is just trying to reach his stick too far. He's kind of out of position, falling behind on his man, and so he fails to kind of get on him in there and hook him. And going to the box, it's going to be Vasilevich. He's going to sit now for two minutes and set earlier for a tripping penalty. So second time in the box tonight for Vasilevich. 7-14 on the board. And this penalty kill group did a solid job getting in and out last time. And you only have to wonder now, can Ferris try and cycle this back up to the point and look for some dirty traffic in front? It's probably their best bet to get a goal here. It's a hooking penalty to... Luke Vasilovich. 
which he's wearing Spencer Messina's jersey tonight. As the new jerseys haven't come in for CMU, we saw a little bit of this last year. Bulldogs to work on the second power play. A shot from the point deflected wide. Wood reflexes there by Zavelson. Now tr bidding for a sharp angle. There was Brennan Karn, but it went up and out of play off a couple of deflections, 29 seconds gone. Yeah, you're, that's an underrated save, a deflection in front. This one's got a saucer on it, and it's squeaking to the right post, but Zavelson gets it with his right foot. Such a quick goaltender. I mean, Reagan, on a guy that isn't the biggest in height, he's about five foot seven in stature, uh, how important is it to have those quick reflexes? It, it's really important, especially as you see National Hockey League goaltenders trend toward the taller guys. The Bulldogs right off the faceoff. Great job by Brennan Schultz Don't you think to get in front of that to shot. Be making NHL comparisons? I mean, that's apples to oranges as it gets, man. It is apples to oranges, but it's the trend. It's the way hockey's going. But my question see, more to you was, being a shorter goaltender, he has those reflexes. Mm -hmm. What advantage does that give him? I mean, it, it allows him to be quicker, and he has to be quick, especially with how little of the net he covers compared, compared to a 6-1, 6-2 netminder. Now Newton fed it out in front. Great job there by the defense to tie it. Barry out in front. Across the lay, Pierlaski, the alternate captain for the Bulldogs, works to the right point. Dropped it off there for Van Vliet. Van Vliet down the half wall, pressured by Schultz. Van Vliet up top for Pierlaski, a shot that was blocked in front, and Savelson stayed with it on the rebound. Lost side of the puck for a moment. Here's Van Vliet up top to Pierlaski on top of the CCHA logo. Worked it down. Here's Newton behind the net. Over to Van Vliet at the half wall. Down the wall to Newton. Newton back up top for Van Vliet. It went under his skate. And now here's Brennan Schultz turning on the Jets, but he won't be able to get there. Only, only doing so much as to pressure Dan Duran. Late offside here on the Bulldogs. And there they go. It's whistled down offside. It'll be a bit delayed from the officials. That's a tough break. They were getting that power play, cycling well, getting three, four, five shots on uh, Zavelson there. But you see just that little slope up at the blue line is all it takes to get him out of the zone and give the CMU the chance to change. This Ferris team, state team can pass the puck. They can move it well, but it seems like right now they're just trying to play catch up to a Central Michigan team that, let's just face it, got off to the quicker start. 25 to go in the Vasilovich penalty. Across the way, chasing the puck in, here's Gaffney, along with help from Chase Adams, but look at the defensive work. There by Kyle Robertson across the way. Puck's worked free to the near side, Colton Cundiff in the corner. Both we'll feet it out in front, it bounces free and up to the right point, here's Guillory. Guillory worked it down free, five to go in the power play. Robertson once again going to work down low, and the Chippewas have killed off the second power play of the evening for the Bulldogs. They still got some defensive work to do though as Bulldogs have hemmed them in their own end. Good work there across the way. By Armin Trout to work the puck free and now over the line here's Morgan the other way for CMU. Under five minutes to go in the opening period. CMU up two nothing off of two power play goals. One from Nathan Bottles and one from Andrew Porzondek. Isaac Gibbs worked the puck free at the point. Oh, that shot was deflected there by Vasilovich as he's taken down out in front. Clements along the half wall. His shot deflected up and out of play off the skate of Chase Adams. We'll have a stoppage of play with 4.35 to go. Stay with us for the first intermission report. Parker Morrison will have that for you. Here we'll take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard as well as recap the action thus far. And this one, that's at the intermission report coming up next at the conclusion of the opening period. You mentioned Robertson's name a number of times. That is an impressive start for him. Was one of the best players I noted from assistant coach Charlie Hayes, who mans his defensive unit. So impressed by him, his stature, his size, and how smartly he is defensively. I mean, yeah. two on ones all night, and he's winning those battles over deep in the corners. You talk about Robertson spent 25 games with the men's division two team last year. Four goals, eight assists, 12 points. One of the 10 D2 Chippewas that have made the transition to Division Three. In his senior year out of Livonia, Isaac Gibbs worked the puck free at neutral ice, but he lost it over the line, and here come the Bulldogs. Over the line, 
Here is Young, lost the puck at the circle, and now look out, Connor Beamish, the former Division II captain, worked the puck away. He's over the line, he'll work it with a shot right off the pipe. Clemens gets it back in the slot, shot blocked out in front. Gibbs turns and fires one that pinballed wide. Now Beamish was going to the bench for a change, skating with his head down, and he'll whack the puck in from the line and finish that change. Man, Beamish is just having a wonderful <laughs> chance the other way. Schultz put it out in front and bottles. Couldn't finish it on the back door. 3.12 to go. Chippewas look like they're on a power play now. But it's really just five on five. Yeah, they've oh. got a tired Ferris State group. Now they'll get a chance to change. I mean, I think Ben Nowak, one of the seniors for this Bulldog team, was out there for the last two and a half minutes. And a great job. That, that zone possession for CMU, Devin, really started with Connor Beamish's hustle to get down the ice. Yeah, he's had a wonderful period. We're gonna have to talk about him, Parker Morrison. Oh, look out, Alec Newton's behind the defense with Nathan Bottles coming back. Newton, the shot, save Savilson. Great job both by Bottles and Savilson to work out Newton there. Great back check by Bottles to kind of disrupt the shot for the leading scorer here. Go for the Bulldogs. Pierleski over the line, fed it to Newton. will go behind the net, trying to find Van Vliet. Van Vliet gets it in the corner, but his pass up top was deflected by Brennan Schultz. And the puck will go down the ice where it'll be controlled by the Bulldogs. They're 2 forcing, to go. They're forcing Ferris' best players to spend all this time chasing Reagan. I mean, out Newton's best chance of the game by far. And Van Vliet has to go all the way back down the ice and change this. And I mean, look at the work by poor Zondek working over his man at the blue line. This is just great work by the Chippewas. The first, oh, what a big hit by poor Zondek across the way. Laid out his man and Alec Newton. Chippewas bring the physicality here in the first period. Both the leading scores for these teams. And that time it's Porzonic again, the betterment. Running his man into the boards across the way was Barry. Now Nadu steps over the line and his shot whistled wide on the near side. 133 to go in the opening period. CMU up one up two goals off of two power play goals, starting perfect on the man advantage. Bouncing puck in the Bulldog end has worked out. Robertson couldn't fully control, and he'll work it back to the near side. Nadu over the line, tried to drop it back for Morgan, but it was just too far for him, and the Bulldogs will work it out. Robertson intercepted the feed, will be driven into the boards across the way by Brendan Karn, the senior for the Bulldogs out of Gross Eel, Michigan. Been a couple of years with Gross Eel High School. Under a minute to go, Siraki across the way for the Chippewas after the dump in. He'll feed it out in front. Morgan was tied up. Siraki on the back door couldn't finish, and Martin will fire a shot, save the rebound, loosen the blue paint, and they jam away at it, and eventually it comes into the mitt of Dandoran. Some good net minding there from the Bulldogs, but what pressure by the Chippewas. Well, this puck changed direction about three or four times. Reagan left to right. First you get Siraki with a near side shot, and then you feed it up to Connor Morgan off a lucky bounce. Morgan doesn't capitalize on that, but it comes back to the way after their goaltender. Uh, Dan, Dan Aran made that save, had to do it two, three, four times. I mean, this is the stuff that wears down a team. Constantly being in front of your net, trying to pack the box, and you can't get it out for the life of you. Robinson made a good play to keep it in at the line. Comes free back up to him, but Siraki's pass had too much mustard on it. And the Chippewas will have to come back with under 30 seconds to go in the opening period. Across the way, there's Robertson. Worked it free to Siraki up the left wing. Punched it into the zone, but it was flipped back out by the Bulldogs. Puck free across the way. Chippewas wanted a penalty. They aren't going to get one as Siraki was able to work the puck free. And it'll be the captain, Christopher Martin, to hold it. The puck at the end of the period, Central Michigan. One heck of a start to this season, Devin. What are your thoughts on this first period? Superb. I mean, in every facet, they have dominated this period. More shots on net, more relentless pressure. They are a step ahead in every sense and more physical. This is one of the most impressive periods I've ever seen, to put it bluntly, from Central Michigan. I, I mean, this is pretty much picturesque start you could have. And some wonderful saves from Zavelson. He had a crazy breakaway save with the left glove pad on Alec Newton, their leading scorer from last year, Ferris State. But, I mean, they're going to have a lot to go into the break to be smiling about, and 
We are as a, up here as well, and Parker Morrison will debrief that with you in a little bit with the intermission report coming up here. Step aside for a moment. You're watching Central Michigan Hockey versus Ferris State opening night on CCHN. And if you are just joining us, let me tell you, you missed one crazy first period. It was all Central Michigan. They started off with two goals, one by Nathan Bottles, the other by Andrew Porzonic, both of which have played tremendous today. And it has been a picture-perfect 20 minutes for the first period for the Chippewas. Now, the physicality has really helped them out here with a couple huge hits from uh, a couple of the Connor Benishes, number 12 over there. And then we also have... Um, Nathan Bottles and Andrew Porzonic who have just been playing great. Great defense on the blue line from number 12, Connor, Connor Bemish. He had a huge hit in the first period as well. Some momentum swinging hits down on the offensive side. Then some great passes and chances that actually ended up having the Chippewas pull in front by one in the very beginning. Now, another person that I really want to look out here for is Nathan Bottles. He had one in the very beginning, a great goal coming off a loose puck, and he has just been creating chances on the offensive end. I don't think anybody has done it better than him so far today, and you got to give the man credit where credit is due. Like I said, physicality has been absolutely outrageous here today at Ferris State, and it has been one of the key factors helping Central Michigan stay in the lead. You've heard the fans go crazy every single time there's a cross check from one of the Central Michigan Chippewas. Puck possession has also been a very key factor here today, as it has been, again, all Chippewas. I know I'm saying it over and over again, 
but you can't make this up. It has probably been 80-20 from what I've seen so far here today. And the really big question is, can Central keep this up? They've had a picture-perfect 20 minutes, and they don't look tired. They look as fresh as they started here today. And now you're looking at Ferris State, who looked tired after the first five minutes. That goal went in, and I believe that momentum really shifted to the Chippewas here today. I hope you stay tuned for the second period. I'm Parker Morrison. Thank you for watching CCHN.
back here inside of Everglades Ice Arena. Second period just about to get underway. Central Michigan festooned in the white road jerseys with maroon and gold trim. Ferris State wearing those black home uniforms with crimson shoulders and crimson and gold trim. We'll face off at center. Josh Kilgren wins the face off. And we're underway. Central Michigan defending a two goal lead. Look out, nice stretch pass at a three on one. Great defense there by Jack Guillory, the freshman defenseman there for Ferris State to break up that three on one. Central Michigan, Devin, we talked about it. Personal conversation during the break. What a dominant first period. And look at them, they just leave right where they left off. They're finishing checks on every single play. They're making the passes, not just the simple ones, but the miraculous ones through traffic. And look at these shots. They are just relentlessly forcing the Bulldogs defense to skate the half length of the ice back down and forth. It wears a team down. That's exactly what Brendan Martin wanted to do. And Parker Morris said in the break, can they keep this up? Because right now, I, I, it can't get more one-sided than this. Yeah, CMU can't, he, can't have allowed more than five shots on goal by the Bulldogs. Now look out, Van Vliet, nice toe drag around Robertson, but a good stick work there by the Chippewa defenseman to work it away. Pirileski knocked that puck down as it was floating up in the air. He worked it behind to Van Vliet. Van Vliet touched it to Newton, Newton down low. Good job to work the puck free by Robertson. He worked it up there for Bottles. Bottles ahead with Gilgren. Out there with Beamish. Gilgren over the line and let a shot go, but it was Deflected up and out of air by Nick DeMarty as the Chippewas of. I mean, simple. Reagan, that pass by Nathan Bottles, are you kidding me? Flick of the wrist through two people to Gilgren. They've been doing this all night long. You can tell they worked on the first thing. Yeah, they wanted to shoot the puck better, but they're just so much more controlled with the, with the pace of the play, building themselves, and really manipulating the defense to one, overcompensate to the defenders, and number two, just play and miss them. Clements is shot one wide, the rebound on the wraparound. Isaac Gibbs oh, couldn't he's put want it that home. One back. Yep, you're gonna want that one back, Gibby. That was that was a picturesque wraparound. All he had to do was finish it. Admittedly, it was a tough, tough angle. Wraparounds, especially on the backhand, are always kind of hard to control and put in. Didn't get the angle on the near side post, but either way, CMU still leads. 18.08 to go in the second period. Campbell worked over his man. He's across the line with Beamish. Dropped it back to Gibbs. He fed it out in front. Hopped off the skate of DeMarty and will come across the way where Clem Clemence's shot was blockered away. There by Lucas Dandoran. Puck through neutral ice. Worked free. There by Ian Gaffney. And the Chippewas will regroup. Oh, look out. Pass intercepted. Curran works in. Blocker save by Zavelson. That one was deflected right in. A soft shot from the left point, dipped in front by Nowak, and Zavelson will hold on, but that's really been the best chance of the night for the Bulldogs so far. Yeah, that time Clements is looking to stretch this to Owen Campbell. He's in the middle neutral zone, and that time it's Curran who just picks that one off, and you see the poise. He's trying to go top left shelf on Zavelson, and he gets that shoulder up just enough to make that blocker save. He's been reliable for them. That's what we saw one of our keys of the game was. Yeah, shot that time blasted was the shot. wide. There by Colton Cundiff, now look out. Oh, Bishop couldn't handle it at neutral ice. And that, that dump in went to an uncomfortable spot for Colton Cundiff. Now Hank Young over the line for the Bulldogs, dumps it in. Working off Sam Kamara there. Now look out, puck out in front. Oh, that went off Rapoon's ankle. He's hurting after that block shot. Oh, that puck deflected off right in front from the corner and just skittered away. Hammer shot from the left point, gobbled up by Zavelson and some extracurriculars out in front. Zavelson getting up, talking to Hank Young, giving him a few words after Young crashed the net hard. 17.02 to go in the second period. And what a big buck by Will Rapu, number 20 tonight, 5'6". He's a shorter guy, but I'll tell you what, it really doesn't matter as long as you can track the possession, track the saucer of the puck where it's going. I mean, a guy that all I've heard about this training camp is what he lacks in the size, he has in the heart and the drive and the speed to, to, to find the puck before it gets to the net. And this is what his role is first and foremost, stand in front there and be a gritty player to block the shots. CMU getting sloppy here in the start of this second period. Bunches of pa bunch of passes have been picked off. Now a bouncing puck off the, off the post and it's in the crease and the referee waves it off and we're gonna have some festivities in the, in the crease. 
Yeah, and a Ferris State player yeah. takes down Bemish in front. I think that is. And this oh, and now Burleski yeah, gives an extra Loco shove man. to Connor Morgan as Van Vliet and Luke Vasilovich get involved in the crease. I mean, how did that puck take such an odd bounce? It was hanging under Zavolson for about, felt like a oh. minute there, and it did not cross now the Pirileski, line. Now Pureleski, as he's getting escorted to the penalty box by the linesman, gives an extra shove. And they want to go there here. To I, I mean, Pureleski wants to go, and, and smartly, that time of Armitra, he doesn't want to. They're both going to have to sit either way, but I'm surprised Armand Trout doesn't get more, or not Armand Trout, Pirileski more, because he instigated well, the takedown. In the end, we'll see what the penalties assessed are. Right now, it's going to be Chris Armand Trout <laughs> to the box for CMU, oh, Pirileski, man. and... They're getting chippy, not even halfway yet. Yeah, Pirileski, and who was the other Bulldog they escorted to the box there, Dev? Is that 20, 21, it was like Brennan Karn to the box and we'll see what they put up. Time of the penalties will be 329. And now also into the box is Luke Vasilovich, Vasilovich who has managed to be sent yeah. off three times the first third time in the box tonight. 23 minutes and 19 seconds of this season. I mean, it's chaos all over right now. And, and a lot of this is due to frustration from Ferris's end. They want to try and get in the head of CMU, but I think it's just a, uh, not a cockiness rather, but it's just a confident dominance. Uh, they know for a fact they're controlling the play. They know the only way Ferris is really going to establish any momentum shift is either a big goal like that or get in someone's face and make them mad. And so this line's official has to be very careful how they assess this because while you know, our commentary may be towards one side, Let me you can't see clearly that, that Ferris State initiated the contact. Yeah. Five aside here is all the penalties offset. No clue what the penalties themselves actually are. We'll but get an announcement here in a minute. Or two. That's what it is. It'll take some time, I'm it's sure. Pureleski and Armin Trout still jawing back and forth. Now look on a pass intercepted over the line. Carnal tee it up and fire shot off the skate at the side of the net. There of Ian Gaffney. Now the Chippewas over the line. Schultz near side. A shot blocked away by Dandran. Puck free into the corner. Schultz had his man fall down. Puck comes free on the near side. Robertson, he'll tee it up and fire a shot. And a penalty coming up on CMU. Interference will be the call. So the Chippewas will have a penalty. Yeah, it's going to be serve on Gilgren. Here is Gilgren's going to go to the box. Yeah, he, he's shaking his head as he goes off. But he, He's frustrated because what happened on the play was he took a Ferris State player in front of the net that was trying to circle towards the near half wall where the puck was out of it. And they're saying he held him for just too long and they're going to put him in there. So you get kind of now this weird scenario. It's five on four, but now you got three Central Michigan guys in the box all at once. Chippewas win the faceoff and dump it down. Dandran, though, has been fairly active with the goal paddle on power plays for Ferris State. Now look out, a shorthanded turnover there for the Chippewas, and, but nothing comes of it. Up left wing, here's Adams over the line. Adams working around the outside of goal. The near side. We'll feed it across to nobody in particular before Karn handles it off the boards. Adams gets it back. Great job oh, there by Bishop to work over his man guys. and set it down. Well, first he forces the defenseman to make a Plato guy down low and then kind of just sits in the middle. And now look at this takeaway. Some carnage being made the offensive end for the Chippewas and a penalty coming up on the Bulldogs. Taking his man down there was Hank Young and it's gonna be a trip and Young throwing his hands up in the air but you can't get much more Where's clear they? of a trip than that. Yeah, and, and, and you start to see just that frustration building. I mean. In his own crease right now, Dan Durant is just hunched over, so tired. He's had to move left to right so many times in this game already. We're not even halfway. There's going to be roughly about 50 seconds of power play time for CMU if this stands. And this is kind of the point of the game where you can't really let Ferris get back into it now at any stage. Central Michigan here on the four on four across the way. Martin, his pass went wide. Campbell on the back door couldn't get to it. And it was a good job by Dan Durant to come to the near side. And it's nice when you have a goaltender that's honestly keeping you in it right now in, in Dan Durant. I mean, he has made 
some incredible saves right now across his body. Stuff that's very quick from the point, redirections. I mean, this could easily be right now a 4 nothing tilt for CMU. And the key for them, I mean, again, right, keeping that composure. Remember last year early in the season, we talked you can't take penalties late in a game. When you get frustrated, you can't barrel the guys over. And it looks like Ferris is, is now the team that has to go and, and play that more dirty side or that more aggressive side to, to sort of spite something in this the hardest team. Killed right off the face off. His shot was batted away by Dan Durant. Now Gibbs works it back up top here on the four on four. 40 seconds left. Here's a shot and snagged out of the air very calmly. There by Dander on the shot from Clements from the right point. 37 to go in the four on four. And all of this stuff just gets in the mental of an entire team. When you constantly have to circle your own zone and chase a puck around, you don't have the ability to really spot it. You can't, you don't see the ice as well. It kind of gets you flustered a bit. And that's really what's just happening right now to Ferris State. Clemens' shot is tipped in front, and the Chippewas score! Three, nothing! The shot was tipped home from the right point there by Owen Campbell. He's got his first of the year. It's three, nothing CMU. Now, another time where they win the faceoff, cycle it up the points. Clements worked all season, all season I heard, on this one-timer blast, and this one, Campbell is just sitting on the near side post, and if anything, he's expecting a save by Dandoran into coming to him. Instead, that time, he finds it before it gets to him, and that is a, a killer for a, a Ferris State team that was holding strong for a while, just too much to bear. What a job, what a tip in front. Two of the last three goals have been that way. Now yeah, both Andrew Porzondek and now Owen Campbell getting redirect the goals. Put their team up 3-0 here on opening night. Reagan Cleaves, Devin Sarah inside the broadcast booth with you here at Avic Levin Ice Arena on the campus of Ferris State University. Porzondek's bid from the top of the left circle whistled wide. Clements kept it in. Clements working down the half wall, fed it out in front. Porzondek couldn't get a stick on it. He was tied up by his opposite number, Kundip. Now he's Pirileski, fresh out of the box after that altercation. Flops it in on Zavelson and he'll hold. And Zavelson gives a little bit of an extra shove to Pirileski and they exchange some words again. And reminder, that's kind of what started the feud between these two teams early on in the second period. Yeah, that's one of the guys that, if you're gonna start something with, it'd be Jay Nady, right? But cool as a cucumber, ready to go back out and make something of a play that, I mean, now they'll be back in their own zone. Ferris has gotta find a way to just Get CMU moving. I mean, they, they haven't had time to possess it all because of how we use the word aggressiveness and a lot, but that's because it's, it takes the hustle to chase down a guy where he lays and make him get flat footed. Cundiff tees it up and fires a shot. That one was hit, sailing well wide, but Zamelson stuck his pad out. And as a result, it trickled a little bit closer to the post than the Chippewa fans might like. Here's Martin over the line, left side, worked around by Cundiff. We'll circle the zone, we'll work it up top for Camara. Camara to the near side, Nadu in the circle, we'll feed it out in front, oh, it took a deflection almost onto the stick of Martin, but he couldn't handle it. Martin worked it around behind for Nadu. Nadu's pass across to Bottles was intercepted. Bottles gets it back to the point. To the near side, Camara. Camara across to Martin at the top of the slot, near side, Nadu will work in a shot. And Dandoran patted that one away, Beamish. Accepts the check, works it up top. Chippewas, as the power play expires, Camara lets a shot go from the left point, and it's gobbled up. So the Chippewas fail on the first, or fail for the first time this season on the power play. And now one for two, or one, or one or two for three rather. Yep. Fair State one for three on the penalty kill. He had to fail at some point on the power play. Might as well make it the first game. Good start, though, for the man of Venice, Siraki. Going in for the check. Got mainly bored there on Chase Adams, though. Pass through center. Double deflected. Connor Morgan's going to chase this one down across the way with DeMarty. Now a hammer shot deflected from the point. Siraki in to pick up the loose change. Fed it around behind where it was scooped up by Chase Adams. But good work there by Armin Trout to work it free. Bodies fall in the corner. Armin Trout gets tied up with Chase Adams. No arm goes up from the referee, much to the Bulldog chagrin. <laughs> and now there's going to be a penalty on Armin Trout, which no, admittedly, time, that's yeah. going to be a roughing penalty any day of the week. Dan ran to the bench. Sixth attacker on for the Bulldogs to the near side. Looked out, nifty toe drag, but. 
Yeah. Keel was able to touch the puck, I, and it's going to be a cross check on Armin Trout, no I, doubt. I mean, the first one he doesn't get him because Armin Trout's just trying to get his stick free, and he honestly stops playing the puck. And then the second time, he just gives that extra shove to Adams and says, hey, I'm kind of dominating you right now. So, uh, not, you know what? I've used for domination. It's not even domination. When you can turn a term team around on their heel and make them pirouette back to the puck, but they have to reset the entire timing of a play, Again, it's just little things like that that just wears a team down bit by bit, inch by inch, layer of ice by layer of ice. Ferris State 0 for 3 on the power play tonight. Looking to get their first power play goal of the year. Chippewas, though, have had stout penalty kills throughout the night. Alec Newton down the wing, tried to feed it out in front. Blocked, got it back. Will work down into the left corner. Up to the top of the circle, dropped it off. They tried to get it back to him, but the Chippewas intercepted it. And dumped it down the ice. Yeah, great composure. And who's that? Jake Bishop, once again, uh, he's having a terrific game. I am so impressed by this guy. We, we have so much to talk about right now. And look, look at that, Devin. You talk about it, and there's Bishop working the forward check, and now Will Rapoon will hold it back in his end as the Chippewas are fired up across the way. As it's been a phenomenal penalty kill. Now look out, Bishop has Dan Duran caught outside the net, and Bishop was getting held up there by DeMarty. As... DeMarty tried to cover for his netminder who was stranded outside of his crease. Alec Newton picks up the puck, a three on two possibly developing, though it comes to nothing. Newton down into the corner, puts on the brakes with Camaro right behind him. Newton fed it out in front, padded away by Zavelson. Rapoon on the rebound, will wrap it around the boards. Pirolaski kept it at the point, skipped past Newton in the corner and Camaro will slap it up top where it's kept in by Cundiff at the left point. He's put that back down and it sent the length of the ice with 30 seconds to go on the man advantage. Yeah, that's a tough pass to give up there by Van Vliet who just looks so deflated at that half hole. I don't know if it's a fatigue issue or if he just didn't play this pass the right way, but he just gave up an entire power play chance for Ferris State and now they have to come all the way back. And they don't even do that. Pass intercept by Jay Nato at the line. He's taken down. But he got the puck on goal, that's all that matters. Now here's Ian Gaffney up the wing, fed it on to Chase Adams. Chase Adams tried to do a move, but he lost the puck. It's good defense there by CMU, and it'll roll in on Tavelson for the hold and the whistle with 10.31 to go in the second. Fans, don't forget the See Me Klobacchia YouTube channel is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full-game broadcasts for men's D3 and women's D2 hockey. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so as never miss a moment of Chippewa hockey. Just go to YouTube, search See Me Klobacchia Network to find our channel. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. Puck knocked down at the line. Chippewa's back to full strength. Chase Adams down and around the outside of the net. Finds his man on the near side. Tipped in front, loose puck in the slot. Here's a shot by Kundis, patted away by Zavelson. Great job by the Chippewa netminder. Now they feed it off the outside of the net. A couple of Bulldog fans down to our right thought that was a goal, but it only hit the outside of that. Great hustle by Connor Beamish to beat out that icing. Holy lifting. Connor Beamish turning on the Jets to get around. Brennan Kahn there. And again, not letting the foot off the gas. 3-0 lead halfway through the second, and I mean, they look at just as fresh as they did the first five seconds of this hockey Robertson game. Robertson will tee it up and fire a shot. That whistle just wide. 9.40 to go here in the second period. Chippewas, a couple of exciting moments brought on by Connor Beamish here. Now look out, an intercepted pass at neutral ice. Luke Snow entered the zone, but he couldn't get it further than that, and the puck trickles back behind the net. 9.24 to go, second period, Central Michigan. Up 3-0 on the Ferris State Bulldogs. Isaac Gibbs over the line, bouncing puck. He tried to shovel it on goal, but Dan Duran turned that one away. You can tell Isaac Gibbs, he got a lot stronger this offseason. Had a hit early in that first period, and then that time, it's two guys. Carries now, that puck all the way Campbell on. Campbell worked it free with a shot in the left circle. He gets it back on the rebound. Up top for Clements. Clements on the CCHA logo. His shot was blocked by Snow, but great. Persistence there by Clements to keep the puck in play for CMU. Now it's out in front. Isaac Gibbs all alone and he ripped it high. And he wants that one back. He's had two chances now where point blank. Hey, wrap around that first time and then there. Now he's got it back again. Tried to slip it out in front. Fanned on it, but he get but he has the puck still. Isaac Gibbs working around the zone clockwise. Fed that one 
just wide of goal. Bishop up top to Clements. Clements hole at a wrist shot goal. That was sticked aside there by Cullen Ellis. Now here's, Rup who, or here's Bishop in the slot and a shot. That was gobbled up there by Dan Duran. And that brings us to this date in Chippewa's history. CMU not really active on this weekend. Historically, only two games have been played on either the 22nd or the 23rd of September. And we'll take a look back a year ago to or a year ago tomorrow at the season opener against Ferris State. Uh, CMU won four to one here at Ava Glavin after Ty Schiff opened up the scoring with a power play goal under five minutes in. Then Keelan Baker, Nathan Bottles, and Connor Morgan scored three goals. Morgan and Bottles, that, that was their, both of those first career ACHA goal. I hesitate to say collegiate because Nathan Bottles spent a year in NCAA. That's this date in Chippewa's history. Pirileski behind the defense, a shot, and there's a penalty coming up on CMU here. But Zavelson took that one right off the bucket. And so we'll have to readjust some straps here. CMU is going to head back to the penalty kill. Yeah, they're going to get Rapoon here for a cross check in the back. And that was just a Ferris State player driving to the net hard, and Rapoon fortunately got him a little bit higher. And it wasn't even that bad of a cross check, I thought, but it was more of just the positioning and kind of flat-footed, got him on an angle where he was skating in. It looked like he pushed him hard. So another time they go to the box, but quite honestly, if you're Zalveson right now, you've got to be so confident in this defensive group. I mean, the, the trust level is at an all-time high right now. I don't think Ferris got a shot off in that last power play. zavelson has got his mask pack on. We're underway in the power play here. Chippewas do a good job of working that puck free and sending it down the ice. Ferris State 0 for 4 on the power play here tonight. Here come the Bulldogs. They try to dump it in, but that goes off the pad of Adams. Puck free at the side of that. Adams worked it free. It popped up in the air. Comes bouncing back to earth. Where Schultz is clearing it blocked. Kind of a shot off the high glass. It came free. Loose in front. And Savilson able to hold on. And now Schultz is going after Chase Adams. And Schultz is... Got to be careful there. Doesn't pick up a minor penalty afterwards. And the referee talking to both. Yeah, there's, there's no worse for the weather. That's just a couple guys. That time, a driving player in Ferris State's Adams to the net. And <laughs> Savison wanted to flash his leather a bit. Nothing wrong with that. Bulldogs win the draw. 126 to go on the power play. That one sailed high and wide. Across the way, big crunching check by Adams and down to the ice goes a Chippewa across the way. That's Armentrout, hammer shot high and wide. Armentrout took an odd spill into the boards. He's slow getting up, but gets back in the play. On the near side, here's Gaffney up at the point. His pass was intercepted, and now look out. Christopher Martin's behind the defense, shorthanded. Who worked in a shot, saved and red. Rebound out in front, Bishop was denied. Great shorthanded chance there for CMU. Good to see Armentrout get off. Yeah, he worked over no a worse for right there and Gaffney. I mean, Gaffney just got caught flat-footed that time, and all Martin had to do was push that puck forward, and he had a break. Now Adams comes in and delivers a hit along the half wall. All of a sudden, Ferris has started answering the physicality department, Reagan. Yeah, Ferris State turning up the physicality, really, since those coincidental minors back less than four minutes in. That big scrum around Zavelson. Bulldogs have really turned up the heat physically, but CMU still has been able to withstand it. Now Zavelson comes diving out of his net and collides with Brendan Clement. Yeah, he was worried Brendan Karn was gonna wrap around that time and take that away, so a little bit jumpy on that reaction, but yeah, I, Clement's probably had control of it, unless they're gonna change anyway. And hey, have you noticed something? They've been cycling all four lines to a T all night long. You haven't seen, yeah, you've seen a lot of Isaac Gibbs in this game and Connor Beamish, but I mean, Vasilovic, Morgan, Armand Trout, who stood up and got back to the bench after that double hit on him. I, I mean, they were cycling all four lines. Everybody is doing their key, which is contributing right now. We'll keep an eye on Chris Armand Trout. See if he returns to the game. Took a hard hit across the way. A couple minutes, a couple Shifts to go. Now here's Pirileski, top of the right circle. Hesitate, shot, flunkered away by Zetwilson. The rebound lays to the side of the net. Chippewas able to get it up. Now Pirileski in a race there with, with 
Owen Campbell, he steps around, tried to find Beamish, but the pass was broken up there by the Bulldogs' defense of DeMarty. Now over the line, here's Van Vliet. Van Vliet caught up across the way, Barry worked it free, a shot that was blocked. And the Chippewas get it down, look out, Campbell's behind the defense. Owen Campbell working in, a shot saved by Dan Duran. And some extracurriculars after the play as a crowd forms around Campbell and Pureleski. The alternate captain for the Bulldogs seems to be in the thick of everything. You know, Campbell didn't score on that play, but him and Beamish were playing tag with that puck back and forth and pretty much circling two defenders. He looks a lot more confident this year. I mean, Campbell didn't play the first semester last year, saw a couple of goals in that Missouri State series and then kind of fell off at the end part of the year. And now he's gotten stronger this offseason, makes up a really, really solid junior class. Guys like uh, Isaac Gibbs and... Uh, even though he's not a junior anymore, Jay Nadu I'd consider in that category. Uh, just guys that have finally started to grow into their maturity, right, in their roles. And one thing we'll have to see is how much more has Campbell matured as a goal scorer for this team. That's really what he's known for. But he can really do it all. He's so talented. Braden Kilton shot was blocked away by Dan Duran. Donalds gets in the left corner, out in front. Could it be handled there by Schultz? Nathan Bottles will turn it around. Schultz chasing after it in the... And board steps around his opposite number. Bottles top of the left circle. Old curly cue and throw it down low for Schultz. Schultz taken to the boards there by Young. And it comes free to the line. Kiel takes it, slides it across for Clements. He's unable to keep it in, but good job to keep the puck away from Snow. Yeah, underrated there. Did not allow a fast break for the guy that was on him. And I want to touch pass from Saltz to Bottles. Bottles to the top of the slot. His shot was blocked. Snow gets it and feeds it up the near side to start the breakout. Look out, a man behind the defense. That's Brennan Carr and the captain. Works in, saves Avelson. Rebound, lay on the goal line. Another opportunity and Avelson made the save. Oh my goodness, and Avelson denied Snow with a wide open net. And it remains 3 0. Surrender Cobras all over Avaglavin Ice Arena. This first time, it's a breakout chance. They've got a cherry picker on the other side. Brendan Carr at point blank makes the blocker save. And hey, I think that was number 23 over there. Jake Bishop saving this play, doesn't allow it to cross the goal line. And the second time gets across from, from left to right. Are you kidding me? That is, that is remarkable. I mean, the that fact that he gets back in the play is, is even better. Adam shot, saves Atlas, and the rebound is controlled yeah. by Andrew Porzondic. Man. And the Chippewas are out the other way. Porzondic dumped that in. Dandarand moved it to the corner. 4-10 to go. There's that quickness you were talking about. The ability to get to left to right on your skates and get back into a play. And by a play, I mean an open area where the blind side of the ice is completely wide open to shoot on. Here's Jay Nadu. Working the puck through neutral ice, got rubbed out there by Gaffney. The late offside coming up here on CMU is Brennan Karn. Takes Jay Nader to the ice across the way. 3.48 to Brad. go here I, in there, the second. There is so much to unpack from that play alone. It Look, it's a more about the things that you don't allow rather than the productive things you do. And right now on that case, I, I mean, Zalveson, He's made some pretty solid saves. He hasn't had been spectacular until that point. And you just see how much he loves to flail his body around. I oh, mean, uh, Dominic Hoshik. Yeah, yeah, Hoshik style. Perfect, perfect way. Hey, an NHL reference that wasn't bad. All right, that was pretty <laughs> good. That was pretty good. Not all NHL references are bad. No, but they're apples to oranges. That's for damn sure. It's hockey. Hockey's hockey. That's true. Glass is glass. That's your sticks. And also the NHL is pretty, pretty wide known. That's more, yeah. more, Here's more Siraki relevant. over the line. Nice toe drag pass. Cundiff, but he couldn't get the shot off. He fed that back out in front off the skate of Dandoran. And it stayed out of the net. Bulldogs are able to dump this the length of the ice. It hopped over Sam Kamara's stick icing is going to be waved off. Great hustle here by Titan Moroznik. Now here's Andrew Siraki collecting the stretch feed from Connor Morgan as Cyril Berry took a spill. Vasilovich. Caught up in the near line, the Chippewas get the puck around the way anyway. Here's Morozik. Lost the puck at neutral ice, and it'll be Sam Kamara to hold back for CMU. 2.42 to go here in the second. Stay with us for the intermission report. Parker Morrison will have that for you. Loose puck in the slot. It was knocked away, and it'll be 
Into the possession of, Snow, of Newton, who moved it up near side. Pirolaski is behind the defense. Pirolaski in on goal off the outside of the net. When his shot will collect in the left corner, though, behind the net. Hopped over the stick there of Barry out in front for Newton. A shot, he scores! Alec Newton tag teams with Trevor Van Vliet, the top two scorers on the team a year ago. Get the Bulldogs on the board with 2.18 to go. Yeah, good job by Van Vliet, you said, right on the assist, Reagan. First of all, they get this puck keeping inside the zone at defense. They come from left to right in their own zone. Good cycle around, get it to the other side. For just a split second, Zalison loses sight of this puck. And Isaac Gibbs, who's the trailing man covering Newton, loses him between the dots. He gets this at a point blank angle and just rifles this on a one-timer feed from there. That's a great goal by Alf Newton, one of the best scorers in the MCHC, their best goal scorer on this Ferris State team. Three to one, just out, over two minutes left. So Pirolaski and Van Vliet the assist. Now look out Owen Campbell's free whole work in a shot well defended there by DeMarty. Isaac Gibbs collects the pass, will work in on Dan Duran, save the rebound, is loose in the crease, and Dan Duran covers with nothing coming of that further. 1.45 to go here in period two. And now if you're Ferris State, you that was a crucial goal. I mean, just before the second period ends, you need some spark, you need some life, and it comes from your top guys. For CMU, they can't get complacent right now. I mean, you have been controlling the pace in this game. You have been hemming them in the zone and wearing this Fair State team down. Now, all of a sudden, you get complacent. You start making some passes you wouldn't normally. It can cost you. So they got to continue to put on this pressure. And it's not just a, a, a you know, there's a lot of, uh, what do you call them, Reagan? I'm a little off today. Uh, cliches in hockey, right? But how do you keep pressure on? You continue to make solid passes like you have all night long. Here's one of the best at it. Nathan Bottles, one of the best, flubs it there, but he gets it back on the pass from Robertson. He does a little a dipsy doodles as he entered the zone, but he was unable to start anything for CMU. 75 seconds to go in the period. This is set the length of the ice. Great job by Schultz to beat out that icing. Now a pass is intercepted by Bottles on the near half wall. Trying to work it free, he steps up. Robertson tees it up and fires a shot, padded away. Bottles gets it, a shot save. Is that just got a piece of the blocker of Dandoran. Now a backhander on goal, save loose puck out in front and Bottles' bid was denied by the right wow. pad of Dandoran. That's three incredible saves from Dandoran right now. I, I don't know how he spotted that puck. Oh, look so out here's right numbers blocker. for the Bulldogs. Over the line, Young, good defense there by Martin though. Young fed it out in front, look out a man free in the circle, is shot, he ripped it wide. And that was Colin Ellis. Now a Puck pinballing up with under 30 seconds to go. Free behind the net, it's clear to the far half wall. Brennan Schultz worked over his man, got to the line but not out. Guillory, his shot was blocked by Nadeau, who'll turn and flip that into the Bulldog bench unintentionally with 17.3 to go. Yeah, and now, I mean, they're, look, a late surge right here by Ferris State. When a goaltender's on it like Dan Aran is, he, he literally is the reason this game is not 5-1 right now. Uh, it's allowing Ferris State to hang in there. And so right now for Central, you just gotta get out of this period. Get better in the third period because right now Ferris State's finding some life. They're making solid passes and they're maybe forcing CME to just clear the puck and get a, a whole bunch. This puck is cleared down the ice. The Chippewa is chasing after it. Andrew Siraki beat Dan Duran to the puck. And the goaltender cleared it out for FSU. Puck through neutral ice, Jake Bishop will hold. Oh, he almost gave that one away across the way with a couple of a seconds to go as this shot is gloved down by Dan Duran. As the period comes to an end, both teams get one across the goal line. CMU from Owen Campbell and for Ferris State. They get the goal from Alec Newton. We'll step aside, Parker Morrison has the intermission report for you when we come back on CMU and now Dan Duran is getting into the face of Isaac Gibbs right in front of the Chippewa bench and none of the referees noticed it and Dan Duran is still giving it to CMU's bench. As they're gonna get both teams off the ice here. Both teams have been getting fairly chippy. It's now Pirolaski 
Seems to be talking with Nolan Smith across the way. They had a nice exit queued up, and then they just had to go and ruin it all. Yeah, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> now Pirileski heads off the ice in a fuss as both teams have been separated. We'll step aside. Parker Morrison will recap the shenanigans that have happened in this period, along with the goals when we come back. CMU up 3-1 after 40 minutes here on CCHN. Two for Central Michigan, and that added to the physicality and the tension tonight. We'll go now to Bishop with some amazing defense on the penalty kill for CMU to result in a four on four for both teams. Moving again now to Owen Campbell with a beautiful redirect to put CMU up three to nothing at that time. Now, no, uh, going on now, CMU penalty kill again. Played amazing, shutting down any Bulldog chances, and that is one of the key points tonight for Central Michigan is their defense has played amazing. They've stopped all penalties from the Bulldogs so far. Now number six with Jake Bishop saves for CMU an amazing goal and puts uh, Mr. Wilson creating a crazy chance in front of the net 
to save that, and it was absolutely beautiful. He was turned around, and Wilson was able to come around and save that, creating CMU to keep it their lead three to nothing until just the last two minutes when number eight, Alec Newton, scored. Just two minutes left. An unfortunate turn of events for the Chippewas. However, they are still up by two, leading at three to one. We'll wrap up the three major points so far. It's their defense that's been helping the Chippewas absolutely dominate the ice tonight. Number two is their stars. Andrew Brzondic, um, Nathan Gibbs, Bottles have been playing amazing tonight, but there is one person in particular that I'd love to give a shout out to, and that is Connor Beamish playing amazing tonight. He showed up. His takeaways, beating icing calls in the second period, turning on the Jets, cross checks, passes, everything in between Connor Beamish has done tonight. So be on the lookout for him in the third period along with all of the other CMU Chippewas as we continue to take on Ferris State University. Three to one the score as we enter the third. You got another 20 minutes of action coming right for you. I'm Parker Morris and this is CCHN. Stay tuned. Chippewa Hockey is on CCHN, oh my goodness. the place to watch Men's Division 3. Here's Connor Morgan out in front, but pours on the East Guard! And Women's Division 2. Burnett's going to get a shot and go as she scores! Every shift, every goal, every game. Central Michigan has turned the corner. All in one place. CCHN, your home for Chippewa Hockey.
back inside Avaglay of an Ice Arena, home of both the Club Dogs and the NCAA Division I team here at Ferris State, hence the CCHA logos down on the ice and everything around the rink. But it's been, it's been the site of a really, really fun hockey game, Devin. And that, that end of the second period, yeah, it was a little bit chippy, but Ferris State's starting to get a little, bit, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, and they built that off of a really strong goaltending performance. Right now, Lucas Danaran is standing on his head. Three, four, five saves in a row the last three and a half minutes, and then they come back the other way and they get their own chances, and it results in a goal for Alec Newton, Van Vliet, their top two scorers connect. It's a case of where, look, this is hockey. All it takes is two minutes, right, where you can get that little bit of surge and it gets you right back in a game. Ferris is still in this game. It's only a two-goal lead. So if you're seeing me right now, they're dominating the puck possession, especially the special teams. I mean, the power play, two for three tonight, uh, five for five on the penalty kill. Uh, they got to keep it up. They cannot get complacent now because this is when it really will come down to it, what their identity is. We talked a lot about it. Can they stay aggressive for the final 20 minutes? And the rough housing at the end of the second period came to nothing. Look out, Pureleski quickly in off the draw, fed it out in front, and Zavelson held the right pad down to the ice tight. Oh, look out! Great job there by a oh, fan yeah, down this guy low. In red. Hey, nice glove save, a, buddy. <laughs> you grabbed wow. the puck. One heck of a drop. This guy, I don't know if we got a camera down here, if we can I see don't this. Know. But yeah, I, sorry, Ryan. I don't think our cameraman, Ryan, over here can get a <laughs> shot of it. But this kid, left hand gloved this. No glove on his hand, didn't even break a sweat. And it, Good on you, it, man. It definitely took some of the momentum off of it. Man, that was that gonna, been dangerous. That was gonna smoke someone about six rows up here. Filet mignon, oh my goodness. With, with no icing, or with no uh, netting, pardon, around, this, around the ice here, that stuff can happen. Good, good awareness by the fans. Alrighty. Back underway, good shot blocked there by Gilgren, and now Schultz will poke it past his man. He's got a two on one developing. Schultz working down the right side, back door, couldn't be finished by Nathan Bottles. And the Bulldogs will clear back out to neutralize where Robertson will pinwheel and fire it to the near side. And what speed that time by Schultz to work over Cundiff. Here's Gilloway at the point, shot blocked by Gilgren. And now here's Brendan, Brendan Schultz once more. Schultz over the line. He's got a man in the back door too far for bottles. Yeah, well, that was Gilgren's even better. Been, Gilgren's been trying to work that in the last couple of chances, but he hasn't been able to. Hammer shot from the point by Robertson, deflected high. Well, Cyril Barry deflected that pathway. That's why it never got there, Reagan. But the point is, you're right. I mean, these two are, it's only a matter of time. This top line, if you would call it, they, they, whenever they've been on the ice, it's been productive. Here's Isaac Gibbs, throwing it down low, hammers his man into the boards, and Barry. Puck is worked free into the corner. Gibbs forwards it on up top for Clements. Clements trying to get the redirect, finds Campbell on it. Up top to Clements, a shot, gloved away by Dandran. He started to chase that into the corner, but it was just out of the reach of his goal paddle. Now Campbell worked it free behind that, and Isaac Gibbs couldn't work it free there from Brennan Karn. And the Bulldogs will gain control in the defensive end, but Connor Beamish on the forward check works it away. Puck bounced down in front for Guillory, and it couldn't be kept into the line by Keel, but now Clements turns on the Jets. He'll beat Pirileski back to the puck. And that'll give both teams a chance to change. Puck tied up across the way. Beamish holds his man to the boards. Chase Adams in there for the Bulldogs. Braden Keel and running Karn there for CMU. 2.15 gone in the third period of play. CMU up 3-1. Two power play goals in the first. One from Nathan Bottles, one from Andrew Porzondik. And the goal from Owen Campbell early on in period two. Tie up in the far corner. Bishop accepts the check. His clearing attempt denied by Barry. He'll work it down low. That one was deflected over top of the goal. And the net comes off its moorings. And CMU will not be able to change as a result. Yeah, Central's... Doing a good job keeping this puck from getting to Zavelson, but if you notice that when they get this puck, they're very quick to try and just ship it out and get off for a change. I think right now, Brendan Martin's trying to get fresh guys on the ice every minute and a half, two minutes, keep their bodies fresh, but I mean, it's kind of resulting to give this puck away at times. And in CMU, there's been a couple times throughout this game, Devin, where there's been some careless passes, especially in that first period, which resulted in 
great A scoring chances for the Bulldogs well, as I, an icing is called here I, against CMU. I disagree. The first period, I thought their passing was the best. All right, now, right now it seems like is when their passes might be getting a little bit too far stretched. But well, they're trying to catch a guy at the far blue line, but it's just under his legs or it's too far for him. And I'm and I'm more talking like there were at least two instances in the defensive end where CMU tried to clear it, tried to catch with those long passes, and it wasn't the entire time, but it was. There were, it's, it's been here all game, and that's, oh, and they score! Zavelson could not seal the puck on the far side, and the Bulldogs have two straight goals. It's 3-2. I, I mean, this is just a bouncer. Face-off, win, draw. It ties up in the corner, and it's Hank Young. Just one of these things that flutters to the near corner of Zavelson's left glove, and it gets by him. I mean, he's got his left pad down. He's positioned correctly but it just takes some odd bounces. And for Hank Young now, they've got Ferris. This is a this is a one-score hockey game where it's been all CMU up to this point. Just a couple of odd goals for the Bulldogs and momentum has swung in favor of the team wearing crimson and gold. So Young getting credit for the goal, no assist, and now Kamara has the stick slashed out of his hands right in front of the referee. Chippewa benches up in arms because of it. This is the biggest test for the CMU team right now. What do you do when this team gets one or two goals on you in a short amount of time? That's two goals in the last six and a half minutes for Ferris. They've got to get back to their play here that made them so good and so aggressive all game long. Puck is dumped the length of the ice, and Zavelson will just plop on it and hold on with 16, 19 to go in period three, but momentum in this game starting to flow down toward Ferris State. And let's not forget some of the guys that are out of this lineup tonight. Andrew Miller, Kyle Bowerson, uh, Nick Wilson. Some of these guys that I think, are, sorry, Julian Johnson, Isaac Hopp, these guys are fighting for roster spots right then. So you, when you dig in these final 20 minutes here, Every single shift matters for every guy that's on the ice. Speaking of which, great job there by Armin Trout across the way to tie up his man and allow Robertson to work it out in front and his pass for Vasilovich wouldn't go. Vasilovich worked it back up top and hopped over this, this skate of the defenseman and now a penalty is going to come up on Ferris yeah. State. To the box, it's going to be Trevor Van Vliet and he's arguing that it was in the course of playing the puck, but Van Vliet's not going to win that argument. And he's going to head to the box. CMU on the power play for the fourth time tonight at 4.05. And that time he just gives a whack right to Christopher Martin, who's carrying this himself over his own blue line and then kind of trails back on the play and he gets the stick up high. So looks like it's going to be a hooking call is the final word on it. And, and unsurprisingly now. No, oh, that one. Quick shot right off the draw from Robertson. Ended up underneath the pad of Dandoran. And this point of the game is not just crucial because of what the score is. It, for Central, I mean, on a four check that's really been dominant, especially in the power play, two for three tonight. Can they get back to their game where they suffocate this Ferris State defense and force them to pack the box? Here's Gibbs, a shot, saving the rebound. Loose in the slot, cleared. Great diving keep in there by Robertson. But now it's poked away, and here comes Snow shorthanded. We'll pick up the puck in the corner, feed it out in front. They got a man, a shot, and that one was just wide. Hank Young bidding for his second of the night. Couldn't put that one past Zavelson, albeit a golden opportunity for the club dogs. Here's Bottles over the line for CMU left to right in this third period. Around the outside of the zone to the near side, working clockwise to the top of the slot and into the circle. We'll feed it out in front. It's loose in front of Dan around to the rebound. Bottles couldn't finish oh the wraparound. Did he get that with the glove? It was stopped by, I believe, a defenseman stick on the back Holy door. Cow, I thought that was for sure a wraparound. Nathan Bottles trying to make up for what was kind of a careless giveaway from Robertson's keeping. 55 seconds to go in, in the power play for CMU. Down into the corner. It's DeMarchi to play it for the Bulldogs. Puck free behind the net. They try to fish it out in front. Robertson tied up at the side of the net. Worked up top for Beamish. Touched it down to Nadu. Nadu back up top to Beamish far side. Down to Nadu. Cross ice pass to Martin. 
Martin along the half wall, a shot, saving the rebound, poked into the slot, and the Bulldogs will clear at the length of the ice and go chasing after it there with Titan Morozik. But the Chippewas are able to win that race. 20 seconds to go in the man advantage. Left and right go the, go the Chippewas, 3-2 lead here in the third. Around the outside of the net, and Isaac Gibbs puts it top shelf by Danderad. And the Chippewas have their third power play goal of the game on a spectacular finish by Isaac Gibbs. He's been doing it for it all game long, Reagan. Missed the wraparound chance in the first period. Second time, he had a breakaway, stopped at point blank. This time he goes inside, outside, back to the forehand and rifles this near side corner over Dan Aran's blocker. That is a goal scorer's goal. Isaac Gibbs, how do you do? Incredible stuff from the junior. Isaac Gibbs had that puck in the neutral zone, worked all the way into the left wing circle. It was good defense by the Bulldogs. They eventually took him down, but a la Alexander Ovechkin, as he was falling down, Isaac Gibbs words, roofed it. Of one Michael France that I know, that was sick. That was <laughs> ill. Isaac Gibbs. I, I mean, yeah, you mentioned it. Working over a, a whole two defense, that was a whole core of defense. He just. It's going to be offside. Right there. As over the line Woo. early on the near side was Trevor Van Vliet. For those of you at home, Michael Rosenkrantz, the sports director at WMHW back at Central Michigan University. Hey, look, the fun's going to continue this opening weekend. Tomorrow the series swings back to Mount Pleasant for the home opener against Ferris State. Puck drop is at 4.30 at Martin Ice Arena, scheduled time. Our coverage begins at 4.05 p.m. Eastern. Myself and Reagan Cleese on the call for that. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. Andrew Siraki trying to create some havoc in the neutral zone. Able to get that puck in, but here's Andrew Peel. Freshman, we haven't seen him a lot here in this one. But the freshman making the appearance. Now Clements worked the puck free at the top of the slot. Toad Reds fires, and he ripped it wide end to the left. Great opportunity there for Clements, the sophomore for CMU out of Clarkston. Now here's Morgan, top of the left circle, down to Siraki, got it back to Bottles, a shot, and that one right into the script Ferris State across the chest of the netminder Dandoran, where he holds for a whistle. A little bit of line shakeup. Siraki this time is out there on the ice with Morgan and Bottles, and Morgan does what he does best, wins a corner battle, gets his puck free to Siraki, and he toe drag swags this one to Nathan Bottles in the slot. I think if he puts this puck more to the far left post instead of right on Dan, Dan Durant's chest. It's in the back of the net, but nonetheless, great passes, great stuff. They're back to their aggressive play now. Clara shot deflected off the gold paddle of the Ferris State. That mind went up and out of play. 4-2 CMU leads here. I mean, this Isaac Gibbs goal is great, but why is it great for more reasons, Reagan? That puts the confidence back in the Central Michigan bench that they have controlled this game, that they have led the pace, that is a dominant, that is a, that, look, he's just saying this is our game. You're not gonna take that from us and it just lights up the whole bench. And look at Brandon Clements trying to score his own kind of nasty goal. Now Will Rapoon had to turn on the Jets to get back defensively for CMU. Pucks free behind the net. Here's Gaffney. Gaffney to the near corner, pressured there by Rapoon. Back up top for Cundiff, his shot blocked there by Gilgren. Chippewa's got it to the point but not out. Gaffney trying to work the puck free along the half wall, got. Gilgren up high with a possible high stick, but nothing comes of it. Now Nathan Bottles, he's got the puck through neutralized with Gilgren and Schultz. Bottles puts on the brakes in the left corner, tried to feed it out in front, it was knocked away. Rapoon kept it in at the point. Shot goes wide, it rattles up and around to the near side where it squirts out to neutralize onto the stick of Sam Camara. Eight minutes gone here in period number three. Central Michigan up 4-2 from Ava Glavin Ice Arena. Reagan Cleaves. Devin Sarah on the call for you here on opening night, the 2023-24 campaign. Happy to have you along with us on what's been an exciting night, to say the least. Puck free behind the net, worked onto the stick of Matthew Fosnot. His clearing attempt got past Kyle Robertson and Andrew Porzonic will tee it up and fire it in. As the Chippewas trying to keep Ferris State hemmed in their own end. Morozik pickpocketed a man and he's up right wing. Steps around Robertson to the outside. Morozik in with a shot. And Zevelson gloved that one. 
and held on to with 11.18 to go in the third. And that's a underrated speed there from Marazic. Number uh, 11 who stands as a freshman on this team. And I just, Ferris State's impressed me in the fact that their goal scorers, their juniors, have shown up today. Alec Newton has had a solid game, Trevor Van Vliet. Uh, this Ferris State team, when they can be at times, shows greatness and surges. And right there, I mean, they've got a kid, Marazic, that has a bunch of speed. This was the same Ferris State team that in their last matchup against Central Michigan, look out, Isaac Gibbs trying to dangle his way in on goal. In the last matchup, Ferris State came back from a three goal deficit. And ended up winning that game with help from Jordan Schmidt as this puck will go just wide of goal. And for icing with 10.51 to go in the third. Well, I mean, you know, and, the, thing, the thing we'll look for tomorrow is, you know, how does Ferris respond on the special teams? And hasn't had a power play goal tonight. They've been stagnant in that. They've had two even strengths, obviously. But, I, I mean, Central, three for four tonight, has been so lights out. Very, very just poised in every sense of the word. And, and when you see little stuff like keeping the pucks out of the blue line, like shoveling it down to the right guy, making the right read at the right time. That's the little stuff that builds your self-confidence and really establishes yourself as like, you're not gonna make too many careless plays. You're gonna make the right move when you can at the right time. Ooh. A little windmill save there. Dazzling glove save there from Vanderan right off the face off. A couple of quick whistles here. And a couple of glove saves from Dandoran. 10.45 to go in the third. And how much does Brendan Martin decide to change up this lineup, Reagan? You like to think that with a, a strong momentum builder like this one, Gibbs not over yet, but I mean, Beamish with guys like Gibbs have been played well. And I mean, Nathan Bottles and Schultz have been lights out together as a pair. Now both teams will look out. A turnover caused. Couldn't connect with Hank Young in the slot. Bouncing buck around by Kyle Robertson, it'll work the breakout here for the Chippewas. Steps around a check there from Luke Snow, and Dandoran comes out of his net to play the puck behind the net. Campbell getting tied up there with Judge Anderson, the freshman from Nagani. Now, Siraki taken down in the course of the man playing the puck, and the Bulldogs will break out. On right wing, here's Nowak over the line. Nowak had the puck worked away from him. Ellis chased after the loose puck. Now that's kept in by Van Vliet. Van Vliet to the top of the slot across the way. Newton, Newton tried to work that up top and was intercepted. Here is Owen Campbell. And yes, your ears are not deceiving you. There is a dog in the building somewhere. It's a service dog. Is now first opportunity of the frame. Isaac Gibbs is going to serve the penalty. Now on top, a hammer shot ripped wide by, by Van Vliet. And the Chippewas will control the rebound and send it the length of the ice. One thing, though, that I will note about Dandoran coming out to play that puck so aggressively when his team is on the power play, it doesn't allow CMU to be lackadaisical with those changes. Now, Newton trying to be, uh, is unable to be worked over there by Brendan Schultz. Worked it up to Van Vliet over the line. To the near side, Cyril Berry, his shot ramped up the stick of Camara, and it comes to the far side after it went wide. Brandon Schultz, great job to tie up his man in Pirileski, and the Chippewas will send it the length of the ice. No changes thus far with 1.16 to go in the power play. Now Connor Morgan and his man fall right in front of him. Just looked like a loss of an edge there for Nick DeMarty. Ferris wanted a penalty, they aren't gonna get one. Now, Christopher Martin had to do a good job to work that puck free, Alec Newton. The puck stripped from him, and Connor Morgan will dump the puck in with 46 to go. In the, in the bench minor for too many men, now Siraki takes that in over the line, and offside delayed here on the Chippewas. They're able to tag up as out comes Pirileski. Pirileski. Dumps that into the opposite corner. Cyril Berry in after it with Kyle Robertson defending. Berry behind the net, trying to work that near side. And comes up, kind of a shot. And Zavelson slides to his left and gloves that with confidence. 7.58 to go here in period three. It might not look like a lot, but this penalty kill grunit manned by Connor Morgan, Chris Armantrout, and Will Rapoon. Look, their entire job out here is to put pressure on a guy in his own zone 
either force him to make a mistake or twirl him out around enough where he gets so fatigued that he can't get out of his own zone. And that's really what he's been doing there. I talked about the scrappiness of Morgan, not just all season, but his role on this team is to be that grinder and frustrate an opposition. He did it masterfully. And I think a guy like Chris Armantrout compliments him very well on that penalty kill group. Very solid stuff. Penalty kill winding down for CMU. Six seconds to go until Gibbs is out of the box. Robertson tees it up and rims it around the boards as time expires. So CMU back to full strength. Ferris State 0 for 6 now on the man advantage. Now there's a shot there by Porzondic that was denied by Dan Duran. And away come the Bulldogs. Over the line, Brendan Karn worked over. The Chippewas get the puck out. Ferris State whacked that puck back in, but Karn was still in the offensive end. Porzonic, a nice one-touch pass, but it was intercepted there by Colton Cundiff. Bishop over the line. will dump that puck in with seven minutes to go. Here in period three. From Ava Glavin Ice Arena on the campus of Ferris State University. Over the line, Ian Gaffney dropped it back. Schultz is going to draw a penalty here. As it's going to be Ian Gaffney who took exception to a hit at the top of the circle and decided to deliver Brennan Schultz via first class mail into the end boards. Uh, you just said it best there and that's that's a frustration boiling over. That is a backbreaker for Ferris State. You know, they had that surge at the end of the second period in the first three minutes of the third here, two goals in six and a half minutes, but now it, it's starting to pour on. And for a guy like Gaffney who really hasn't had a Greatest night from a forward standpoint. I think he's maybe lacked some of the physicality matched by CMU, but otherwise causing penalties there. And now another chance for CMU. They're three for four tonight. Ian Gaffney, a freshman out of a place rather familiar to you, Devin. Wald Lake, Michigan. Here's Gilgren over the line for CMU. Stepped in with a shot. It was blocked. We'll work it up top to Robertson. His shot through traffic tipped in front by Bottles, who's looking for his second power play goal of the night. Couldn't get it there. He's got the puck free in the corner. Battling there with Cundiff. Campbell up top. Here's a shot. Saving the rebound. Loose in the slot. Dandoran's well out of his crease. Looked like he got knocked down. Robertson holds it up across the Campbell. A shot. Diving save by Dandoran. Stuck out the right pad and denied Campbell across the way. Great save. Now another opportunity from the left side was shoulder to side. Gibbs kept it in at the left point with six minutes to go in the game. Here's a shot from distance, saving the rebound. It's loose in the crease at the side of the net. They jam away at the pads of Dandoran, and the referee blows it dead. With 103 to go in the power play. I think Ferris State fans can be reluctant in the fact that they have a goaltender of the future here in Lucas Dandoran. I, Reagan, that's three incredible saves. First with the left glove, then across his body to the right. Then he spots it for the third time to just post it up on his chest. That, this is stuff, as you know, right? It's not the easiest stuff. It hustles, it tires you out. And he's faced a ton of shots today. It really just kept Ferris in it for the whole time. Chippewa's back to work with a minute to go on the power play. Here's Beamish, fan of the pass, but got it back. Porzondic picked up the trickling puck. Porzondic across crease feed. Couldn't find Nadu. Camara down the wall to Nadu near side. Trying to feed it into the slot. Gets it back after it was blocked. Across to Martin on the left half wall. Will throw it around the boards. Up Camara was able to keep it in at the point. Work it down low. A centering feed intercepted by Cyril Berry. He's able to get it to the line, but not out across the way. Bounce pass off the boards for Beamish. Down the wall to Nadu. Nadu up top for Martin. The captain will tee it up and fire a shot deflected there by Beamish but it was off the left pad of Dandoran. Kamara kept that puck in at the right point. We'll put on the brakes across to Martin. Martin, his feed down low was intercepted and the Bulldogs will get it and dump it the length of the ice with time expiring on the penalty. So CMU fails on their most recent power play. And now Two for five on the night. Three for five, right? Three power play goals? Yeah, three power play goals, Barton. Yeah, and again, right here, this. You love to see this aggressiveness again. Look at this, working over guys. I mean, Ferris State, if they weren't tired before, 
has to be now. And I mean, they're just rimming the outside of the boards. They're keeping them out of the slot area, but look out. Here's Kamara at the right point, steps around the defense, works it down low. Vasilovic got it up top to Kamara. He lost an edge, took his man down with him. Referee's going to call nothing on that. Chase Adams picks up the puck. With 3.55 to go, we'll keep an eye on Dan Duran as time winds down here in the third. Got to think the Bulldogs are going to pull him soon. They can get possession of the offensive end. Across the way, here's Braden Kiel. Works it up. Connor Morgan wanted a one-touch pass with, Vas with Vasilovic, but Vasilovic had vacated the space he was in when Morgan saw him last. Reagan Ferris State hasn't had a four check in the last six minutes. And they are hemmed as you can be right now with 3.30 to go. 3.27 to go. Bulldogs wrap it around. Across the way, Brady Kiel puts on the brakes. Unable to work it free. But back in the corner, it's fished out of there by Pierleski. And Campbell stepped on the puck. Was it, wasn't able to get things started the other way for CMU. 3.04 to go here in period three. Central Michigan holding on to a two goal lead. Right now, look out, numbers for the Bulldogs. Pierleski over the line, found Newton to the backhand. Oh, and Pierleski put it just wide, and the net comes off its moorings as Isaac Gibbs took Pierleski into the net. Nothing more than a net front battle. Hopefully no hard feelings between the two as Isaac Gibbs actually pushed the net further off its moorings to allow Pierleski space to get up. Yeah, well, Beamish was ready to turn on the Jets there with Campbell, and Kind of like when you kind of catch a pass in football and you're ready to go and you drop the pass. They kind of pulled that one. A lot of two on one for Ferris State the other way. And you said it, Pierleski gets barreled over into by Isaac Gibbs and just barely missed it. I, I don't know if Zavison would have made the save, but it would have been awfully close. 2.46 to go in period three. CMU wins the defensive zone faceoff. Dan Duran still planted firmly in between the pipes to our right. Newton knocked down at center. Pierleski picks up the loose change. He'll flop a shot in on goal. And Zavelson will hold with 2.30 to go in the third. Dan Ren now about at the hash marks. So we expect that if the Bulldogs win this faceoff, well, actually, never mind. They're going to call Dan Duran to the bench. So an empty net here for the Bulldogs. Face off to the left of Zavelson. Face off. One by the Bulldogs. Van Vliet kept in at the line. Robertson tied up along the boards across the way. Pierleski and Nathan Bottles in there battling as well. Look out. Robertson worked the puck away. Chipped it ahead. Ahead for Brandon Schultz. He's got an empty net ahead of him. He'll work it in and score. And CMU has their fifth goal of the night. And Brandon Schultz has his first as a D3 Chippewa, it's an empty net goal. It's five to two. Way to reward that top line that's had a solid game. Nathan Bottles had a goal early in the first period. And Schultz, who's worked so hard tonight. That's Brendan Schultz, by the way, 6-4, a senior, gets rewarded with that empty netter. A good way to put this game away for CMU. They were aggressive down the stretch in this final third. They did not get complacent. They kept the forecheck going, and they wore down this Bulldogs team all night long. This is a confident win. I mean, this is something where you look into a series tomorrow where now it's it's sweep or bust because you really controlled your tempo. You played the style of hockey you wanted all night long if you're Brendan Martin. And so tomorrow it's just going to be about carrying it off and not getting too high on yourself, not too low. This team's got to stay right where they are in the middle, and they'll be just fine. Under two minutes to go here in this one as this puck goes up and into the Chippewa bench. And how excited do you have to be with a guy like Isaac Gibbs who... That's a goal and assist tonight in spectacular fashion, Reagan. He's going to be expecting a big year from him, don't you? Yeah, Isaac Gibbs has had phenomenal seasons each of the last two. Led the Chippewas in scoring his freshman campaign. Yeah. They forget in, that. Three quarter of the way down the stretch. Yeah, back in 21 22. And then last year missed a good chunk of games, but he was able to still lead the chip or be amongst the top scorers for the maroon and gold icing against the Bulldogs here with 136 to go in the game. Well, the guys that usually score goals for CMU did tonight. I mean, Bottles, Porzondek, Owen Campbell, and then Schultz had one tonight. But then it's it's a case of 
I mean, there's so much more. To, if you read it in between the lines, the power play looks excellent, right? And guys like Jake Bishop having a great night. Look at him again, battling in the corner and nearly winning one over. And Bishop may not have his name show up on the score sheet, but he has been all over the ice for CMU, creating havoc amongst the Bulldogs' line. Here's Jay Nadu chasing the loose puck. It's driven into the boards. But away comes Andrew Siraki with Jake Bishop. Siraki tried to no-look past a Bishop. That didn't work. Not enough chemistry for that yet. And in the first game playing together for those two. 105 to go in the game. CMU is really, outside of that second period, CMU's dominated this game, Devin. Ferris State seemed to have a little bit of life in that middle frame, but CMU has played a very aggressive game. No, and, and you know what they fought through too was the uh, kind of the instigating by Ferris State, right? They didn't allow a fight to break out. They didn't allow the line brawl to happen. They stayed composed. They kept their foot on the gas. And yeah, they let a surge late in the second and early third, but yeah, you're right. Since then, they took the control of the play over and it showed tonight. This is a great win. And I mean, this team proved a lot tonight and what they can do as a chemistry as a group. The sky is the limit now for the Central Michigan squad. There was a shifty move for uh, Shifty Wittershins move across the way for the Bulldogs as they tried to enter the zone and a good glove save there by Zavelson to preserve the score at five to two. We got some talking to about Zavelson because he made some spectacular saves tonight. A couple that he let in that maybe you'd want back at times, but I mean, I mean overall a pretty good successful debut for the yeah, D3 But Both team. the goals, I mean, the, the, the second goal for the Bulldogs was really it was one you want back, but that first one by Newton was one heck of a shot. Yeah, he's good. I mean, he's going to be their leading goal scorer probably again this year. Puck's tied up along the near side. It's actually up on the boards on top. And, oh, and Vasilovich gets rammed from behind there by Judge Anderson. And there's going to be a penalty for that. The freshman from Nagani unable to hold his temper as he slammed Vasilovich into the boards. So we'll see what the penalty call is here. It's going to be a roughing call. Yeah, that, that the was 1957 just, mark. That was just Vasilevich just wearing down time and, and playing little jokes, as you mentioned it, right? He's kind of holding it with the, the, the teeter of his stick against the wall. And yeah, I mean, roughing as they come. But a frustrating end to the night for Ferris State. But hey, that goaltender is pretty good for them. 3.7 seconds left, the puck is dropped. The Bulldogs will hold behind their net and Central Michigan for only the fourth time in their, or only the second time in their history, Devin, has won a road game on opening night. <laughs> Impressive fashion too. Back-to-back -back years, they do it on opening night. Four to one last year, five to two tonight. Excellent performances tonight. Isaac Gibbs will be talked about a lot. Great debuts from a couple of D2 guys and a goaltender that, hey, I think he has confidence with guys in front of him, and he did a pretty solid job tonight. Overall, all phases, CMU dominates this one, Reagan. We'll talk about it more in the postgame show coming up. Indeed we will. We'll be back in just a minute. Stay with us, postgame show coming up as the Chippewas win 5-2 on opening night over the Ferris State Bulldogs. You're watching CMU Club Hockey on CCHN.
Well, it's a, it's a successful night, to say the least, for Central Michigan as they uh, defeat the Ferris State Bulldogs 5-2 to two on opening night. Reagan Cleves, Devin Sarah back here inside the broadcast booth. Happy to have you along with us. But, Devin, Central Michigan really from puck drop dominated this game, and it really showed, especially early on. Every facet of this game. Uh, the forecheck to start things early in the game got going. Nathan Bottles in that top line were terrific. I mean, from just a simple standpoint of getting the breakout going, I was looking for the little things. How would they do making simple passes? How would they do getting guys that haven't played together well in the fold? And they really, from the start of the game, whether it was at neutral ice or cycling the puck in the offensive zone, controlled the play. They were calm, collected. They forced a, a really good goaltender tonight in Dan Aran to move around a lot. And I think that was the key from the beginning was to just frustrate Ferris State, be aggressive in all facets. There were some big hits tonight. I mean, Kyle Robertson laid his body. Uh, Brendan Schultz, who had his first goal as a D3 Chippewa tonight. Uh, this is a dominating performance where every single thing that they had in their key, their game plan went correctly. Now, they had that late surge, Ferris did in the second period and early third, but that's going to happen, right? It's hockey. You're going to have times where you're not always on it 100%. I thought they did everything well tonight, and they spread the puck a while. Four different, five different goal scores tonight for Central Michigan. Yeah, I really think one thing that the Chippewas did really well that maybe last year's team might not have done so well is recover from those two goals that Ferris State scored early, late in the second and early on in that third. Remember the last time these two teams played, CMU had a three-goal lead, ended up losing four to three. So for CMU to be able to stop the bleeding and even to add on to that in the end, was this really encouraging. What you just said is such an underrated point because when you get off schedule and same year times, I think when they get in their uh, out of their sink of play, when they're trying to clear the puck away quickly, they tend to be a little bit careless. They give it up. We've seen that a little bit from that top forward group, but you notice how they just rebounded from that. They didn't they snapped out of it. They did not let it drain them like you said it did last year. Up uh, three for six tonight on the power play. Three for four up to that point. They were terrific on it. They did not let off the gas from that point. If you can make special teams work for you, if you can take advantage of those chances you get, which they didn't do all the time last year. Pretty good, 25% last year, but they didn't always take advantage, especially against teams that were better than them. This was a type of win where you say to yourself, now we know what we are. I think tonight was an identity establishing win from a goal scoring standpoint. Those D2 guys proved a lot. They worked very hard. Credit to guys like Jay Bishop tonight, Kyle Robertson, Will Rapoon. I saw you blocking a couple shots tonight, man. He was terrific, as well as this whole squad. Dominating win from start to finish. Yeah, and a couple of spectacular performances from Isaac Gibbs and Sam Zavelson. <laughs> Zavelson had that ridiculously crazy save down to our right. Showed off that, his quickness. Yeah, yeah, that kept the Bulldogs off the board to start. But And then Isaac Gibbs with that spectacular finish at the end uh, to make it 4-2 both those players it was really encouraging to see them come out tonight I don't know how you feel about just one game it is just one game after all and they're going to have to back it up on a home ice tomorrow but all four lines contributing guys like Morgan getting in the corner scrappy Armentrout having a good game yeah Vasilovich gave up a couple penalties but he made up for it with that aggressive play and took a little cross check at the end there and roughed it off like it was nothing this is a type of team that I think you can plug and play any type of guys. You will hope the lineup kind of stays similar to what it did tonight because of chemistry and they want to get guys still playing well, get together like that top line of Schultz and uh, Nathan Bottles. But the point is they know what they have right now. They can be a great team. They showed a greatness in them tonight. Can they back it up tomorrow with a win on home ice? It'll be the question. Yeah, that is the question. A couple of impact players tonight uh, for CMU, Connor Morgan and Sam Zavelson for Ferris State, Alec Newton, Trevor Van Vliet. Devin, how they do tonight? Uh, pretty solid. Connor Morgan didn't get on the board, but was scrappy all night, winning battles, especially on the penalty kill. He was great. That's really his main role on this team, right? Uh, Zavelson, we don't have his final saves tonight, but you mentioned that miraculous save going across his body. I thought there were a few tonight that he did let squeak in, notably that uh, second goal from Hank Young that went past his left pad on the corner. But overall, he did what you needed him to do. Be reliable, didn't need to be spectacular, just good enough to get your team through it as the defense in front of him stood up. And then for Ferris State, uh, their goal scorers had to show up when they did. Alec Newton had a miraculous goal. Their only one I, I thought was of real value. And then Van Vliet, Trevor Van Vliet, backed him up on that with the assist. So uh, for Ferris State, they've got some great goal scorers. They've got a great junior class uh, specifically. Those two are juniors. And so 
for them. They're going to rely on them heavily down the stretch, down the stretch this season. They're going to rely on them uh, to reduce that goal scoring. But uh, our impact players, Morgan, a solid night, Zavlison too, and then uh, switching to our keys to the game. Yeah, Devin, you have our keys to the game. I mean, first point is be aggressive from the get-go, and I really think the Chippewas did that tonight. Well, they showed that, and and the penalty kill, okay, specifically. Can you force a team to get not just frustrated in five on five? Yeah, you can show you can pass the puck better, possess it. Can you frustrate them? Can you force them to say, what do we got to do to even get this puck past 100 feet? That was the whole thing about it. Aggressive from the get go. Um, they knocked off rust. They didn't have any rust, Reagan. I, I mean, what, the first 10 minutes were some of the most incredible hockey I've seen from Central Michigan ever. I mean, just relentless pressure, did not make a lot of mistakes. Um, and they proved to Zavelson, which was our final point tonight, that uh, they can trust him, or, the, or vice versa. He can trust his defense in front uh, from guys like Keelb and uh, Brandon Clements, who had a great night as well. And you mentioned that aggressiveness, Devin. For CMU, I think what really stood out to me was the fact that they scored on both of their power play opportunities to start the game. You, you were scoreless going into that first power play to get Nathan Bottles on the board that's such a key moment in this hockey game. It's a controlling grass. It's something you say to yourself, this is what we are strong at. This is what we're going to do to you all night long. And it showed that. I mean, they were two for three up to the point and then three for four afterwards when Isaac Gibbs finally had that uh, miraculous goal we <laughs> talked to. I, guys, we got to get this on a highlight reel. Hockey house, wherever you're at. Joe, we got to get this on a highlight, man. Isaac Gibbs, uh, incredible stuff. Um, so... So our keys to the game, all three of them checked off in all phases. Aggressiveness, knocking off the rust, and proving to a goaltender that he has their trust. And taking a look now at the three stars of the game, we had Isaac Gibbs uh, at the first star with that spectacular goal with a goal and assist. Nathan Bottles had the power play goal that opened up the scoring back all the way in the first. And then Sims Allison uh, comes in at the third star with a couple of spectacular saves. Really solid play in net first first division three game we'll step aside when we come back we'll take a look ahead to tomorrow's game but between these same two teams from martin ice arena you're watching cchn And we're back here inside Avic Laven Ice Arena for one final time. Reagan Cleaves, Devin, Sarah on what has been a phenomenal opening night for Central Michigan, a 5-2 victory here on Road Ice. For only the second time in their history, Devin, the Chippewas are able to win, uh, win a game to open up the year on home ice. They're now 3-2 and two in road openers. <laughs> I thought you were going to say on home openers now. <laughs> I was going to say we're in Avic Laven. By the way, Tyrannus facility, thanks to the entire Bulldog staff for having us up here in the booth it was a good time and I, I mean I don't know about you but I am very very hopeful for the future for this season after what we saw tonight dominating in all phases yeah, and Central Michigan now 1 and 0 will take on the Bulldogs tomorrow they they sit at 0 and 1 405 p.m. broadcast uh, for ahead of a 430 puck drop Devin what do you see coming out of that game uh, tonight tomorrow well on the before I get to Central Michigan on the fairest side of things I thought at times their forecheck showed signs of life when they had the top group out there. Alec Newton, uh, Van Vliet, when they'd have particularly Luke Snow at defense helping them bring up the rear, they could sort of get a forecheck going and sort of do what Central was doing to them, have them circle the zone and force Zavosin to get a little bit uncomfortable at times. I think for Ferris State, the best thing that they do is play uh, 
with not much of speed. Well, with their speed, because in the physicality department, Central's winning that game. Let's not kid ourselves. It'll take for them tomorrow some really good sparks. They're going to have to be what Central did to them tonight, get good goals early in the game. They're going to have to hopefully out check them early and then find sparks of life here and there. Uh, overall, if you're switching gears now to Central, I mean, you got to continue what you did tonight. And what they did mostly tonight was be physical, Reagan. And, you know, you and I pre present itself, Brendan Martin's coaching stature has always been physical team. It's always been defensively first. But how much can they pursue that and not get lax days going, not get complacent? You know, this is a team that has talent. It has guys that work hard and are gritty, but they've got to do it for a full 60 minutes. And if they can do that tomorrow, then, well, they've reassured to us that they can and will take over games when they should at times. Yeah, uh, the, in this series, Devin, the road team has won the last four or five matchups now dating back to November 3rd, 2018. So Central Michigan hoping to, that it stops at five games for the road team tomorrow again, 4 p.m. puck drop from Martin Ice Arena. Taking a look at the out-of-town scoreboard, MCHC games tonight. Grand Valley obliterating Miami 14-1 to down uh, in Hudsonville here in, uh, in Michigan, Lawrence Tech. Took on Purdue Northwest. Pitt Johnstown uh, visited Saginaw Valley State at five. Missouri State was in uh, was in Grand Rapids to take on Davenport at eight. And Northern Michigan, the men's division two team, was down in Burton to take on Michigan Flint. Not often you see that. Yeah, I mean, Michigan Flint D two, well D three actually, and you know that D two time team has had a, some close games. They took Oakland University Division one six to five um, after getting swept, but. Pretty solid stuff from a team that uh, themselves is looking for an identity. So a lot of CMU Chippewa action this week, and uh, we'll have some more of it for you guys tomorrow. Like you said, 4 o'clock broadcast time. And the Saginaw Spirit uh, fell to uh, uh, the Sioux Greyhounds tonight, 10-6, to and their loss in that one. But we'll just about wrap it up for us here at Ava Glavin. Before we head out, special thanks to Brody Kaiser, the voice of Bulldog Hockey, and Ferris State for hosting us. Beautiful facility, certainly not a ramshackle broadcast booth here at Ava Glavin. One of the best setups we'll ever have this season. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, our equipment was provided by MHTV. Our cameraman tonight was Ryan Donnelly. Nice job tonight, Ryan, in his first game here with CCH. And our producer and intermission reporter was Parker Morris. And as always, doing a fantastic job keeping us on the air, pushing the ones and twos. And Devin, it's been a good broadcast. It has, it's, been, it's been fun to be back in the booth with you. It's going to be a lot of fun this year, Reg, and I'm so happy that we get back to doing what we do best, and that's following Chippewa hockey. And I'm looking forward to this season. I'm looking forward to the women's team coming up this year when they open things against Northern Michigan. Uh, terrific facility, terrific time, and we're going to have some more on the way, buddy. So I'm excited to do it with you. Me too. Uh, plenty of action coming up. The women's team inactive this weekend gets started. Uh, next weekend against Northern Michigan. Well, that will just about do it for us here tonight, but we return tomorrow afternoon when the Central Michigan Chippewas uh, have their home opener against the Ferris State Bulldogs. Until then, my name is Ring Cleves for Devin Sarah saying so long uh, from Ava Glavin Ice Center as the Central Michigan Chippewas knock off the Ferris State Bulldogs by a final score of 5-2, to two, opening up the season with a bang. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful night, everybody.